up, Destiny? What's up, man? What's up, buddy? Chilling. All right, we're going to start here in just a second. And uh, I'll just do a quick intro. Just want to say something about yesterday's show. And then we'll move on from there. All right. Let me just set this up. Okay, let's do this. A little bit late, as usual. <laughs> what up, everyone? Welcome to yet another Warski Live. How you all doing? Uh, we got some uh, a very interesting episode today. Uh, we have Geek Thu helping me out moderate. What's up, Geek? What's up, Mayan? Chilling. We have uh, JF. How you doing, brother? Hello. I'm glad to be here. Yeah, and we got Destiny. What's up, man? Hey, what's up, buddy? Chilling, chilling. Uh, there's been a lot of uh, things happening this week and uh, a lot of shit happening on Twitter. And we're going to be talking about that right now. I just want to say to everyone who's watching right now, truly apologize about last night's stream. You know, I wanted this open door policy, but obviously there's some people who I have to vet before coming in here. Uh, so I'm going to definitely be a little bit more harder. And if people are doing this muting other people bullshit, I will be banning them from ever being on the show again. So truly apologize about that. Uh, that was, Geek, you were there, right? Oh, uh, yeah, I was sort of half watching. I was traveling from New Jersey. Uh, but yeah, I, I think I was in Atlanta airport and, and I was listening in. Yeah, it, it was, oof, oof pretty bad shit but uh yeah so we're gonna definitely be be moderating everything a little bit more better to keep everything in order now the reason we're all meeting up here today is because throughout this week we have been on a topic that's pretty touchy it's called uh race realism i'm sure you've all seen us talking about this we've had many discussions with many people and destiny uh i saw you on twitter you were uh i think you quote tweeted uh, amazing atheist TJ Kirk, because uh, he was talking about the race realism thing, and you were sort of just talking about like, oh shit, this is now what the skeptics are going to be talking about, and you ain't really happy about it, are you? I'm um, not so much talking about it, but seeing everybody get flipped over to the race realist side because one person comes on and says something that seems kind of agreeable, yeah. Mm. So, what do you think? By the way, just before we talk about that, what do you think about all this shit that's been happening with the skeptic uh, community, anyway? Um, I don't know. It's kind of it's pretty funny, I guess. Um, it was <laughs> really funny fun. because um, Jeff Holiday, one guy. So I'm I'm I am pretty big on like the non deplatforming thing. Like I like everybody. If Sargon's Twitter account gets banned, I usually you know I make a tweet like it's sad that his account got banned. I don't like seeing people get banned from platforms where they can talk to people. Um, mm -hmm. There was one guy on one post on my subreddit where he posted something like, hey, like, if you don't like these guys, they're violating the Patreon TOS or whatever, you should report them. And Jeff, like, started bombarding me with messages on Twitter, like, oh, Destiny, you're supporting this horrible behavior, blah, and I, like, didn't even know this post existed. So I think it's kind of funny now that Jeff was, like, literally on a Discord server, like, doxing people because he didn't like their political <laughs> beliefs. But, um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Crowd was always kind of dumb, I guess, and watching the whole Discord server blow up was pretty funny. I don't know what he thought would happen. I mean, if you guys have been on the internet for any appreciable amount of time, you know that... You, you, if you tell a secret to like two people, like that shit's gonna be leaked at like, you know, three days fucking tops. So the idea that he could have a whole Discord together, like doxing people behind the scenes, and he thought that that would never leak is like hilariously naive. I don't know how old Crowd is. Maybe he's a younger guy, so he doesn't have as much time on the internet or something. But yeah, I don't know. That's pretty funny to me. Yeah. Well, I, I, there were people in there that that knew like this was eventually gonna get out. I mean, uh, Waz Lee was just like, hey, you know, this is gonna get out. It's gonna happen. <laughs> it's just a matter of when. Yeah. He was like, "May you change it from targets to people of interest? Is that cool?" Like, well, I don't know. So, like, I don't follow it too much because it was kind of boring. But, like, what was the point of the targets of interest? Why were they even collecting that information? Did they ever well, say they, why? Because they had no argument. Well, but what was their reason? What was their given reason for collecting the information? Well, from what I saw, there was a few more things leaked to me. I, I actually spoke to a few people who were on the server last night or this morning because I was up all night. But uh, from what I gather is they just look at okay, the one dude I talked to last night. I uh, can't remember his name in particular, but he was actually proud of what they were doing. And I was just, I was so, it was like seven in the morning. I was like up all night. And I, so I was too tired to yell at him, but he, he said he had nothing to do with doxing, but he found it funny. Uh, he just wants to, he's like a, 
a communist, uh, you know, anarchist, and he he wants to watch the world burn. So he was he found it pretty fucking funny. But so I was asking him information, like I was just like, why were they doing this? And he was like, it was just to destroy their lives. It was to, it was to pretty much just get them uh, to not talk about what they are talking about, um, um, like any means necessary. It was pretty much. We don't have a debate here. We're gonna just fucking just ruin everyone. He found it hilarious, and I was just like, "Dude, you're." I'm like, "You're making your side look bad, right?" Because he's extreme left, beyond extreme left, and I'm like, "Like, oh, don't you see that that this actually hurts you in the long run?" And he's like, "Yeah, I don't care." And I was just, all right, fuck. But yeah, it was pretty much to dismantle people and their lives. In fact, one thing that was leaked to me that I haven't leaked out because the person uh, asked me not to was Kraut saying something along the lines of all these guys are going to be on the side of the road selling magic beans and they're going to be begging everyone for mercy and all this shit. So it was definitely, yeah, it was a malicious intent. I was reading out this to someone privately last night, the entire thing, and they're just like, what the fuck? Because it's just Kraut pretty much. And the person was actually, uh, the person who was arguing with them who was in the server he's like guys we should hit their arguments like this is not going to be good in the long run i saw i and then he sent me a video of jeff who was on his cell phone in the car and he's just like you don't know what you're talking about we have to do this this is how we have to do it because they're like dirty people it was it's from what i've seen all the stuff even behind the scenes it's fucking it's worse but i think jeff's got enough fucking hammering this week that you know like there's it's just beating him while he's down at this point sure. uh so yeah i'm sort of like well the thing, this whole thing the thing that bothers me is like um it, and i mean I, I really don't care that much but like if i did care a lot the thing that would bother me was more that jeff didn't just kind of like own it like all right like listen dude like we we had a fucking server we docked some dudes it was a really stupid idea i admit that it was dumb but it was more um because i watched a little bit of it and it seemed like he was hardcore doing the trickle truth thing where he was like well i didn't really do any of this or that and then like something would get leaked and it's like well jeff you were kind of involved in that and he's like okay well we did a little bit of that but i didn't do any of that and then something else it was kind of like that kind of shit yeah he lied yeah. to me twice on my stream yeah. and then every day zeff would just leak something out and then his apology pretty much when medica released his video Jeff's apology was like it was just o- an obvious lie. Yeah, it was just sure. like you're like, oh, dude. Yeah, like I would have respected Jeff a lot more if he made a five minute thing. This is what I did. I'm gonna step back for a bit, do some self reflection, and I'm gonna learn from this mistake. A- everything would have been fine. And now it's just his subs are fucking bleeding and his respect mm-hmm. is tarnished. You know? Yeah, he yeah. was just trying to soften. He was just trying to soften the the, the whole event in order to just. Uh, minimize you know people's concerns about it and and he should have had like a five six minute apology video not this hour long let's make excuses and and try to justify what you did and and then at the end just uh just kind of admit to what we know because who knows more shit might come out and we might see jeff have have more of a more of an involvement and 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 from our experience with him, I mean, he, he's con- he's continued to switch his uh, footing uh, as new information comes out. So, like, why should we believe what he's admitted to right now? You know? Yeah. That, well, that's yeah. the problem with trickle truth, right? Is that after you get caught two or three times, people will just assume the absolute worst about you because it's like, okay, well, what else have you not told us? Yeah. 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 It's it's fucked. Have you seen uh, the one thing we were talking about the other day? We were, and, and JF, I'm not sure if you saw this as well, but did you see the new guest lineup of uh, of Kilroy? Uh, no, I, is there a guest lineup left? Yeah, they, they thought- released it, and it's literally down to 11 people. Pretty much <laughs> everyone dropped out. And I think, so Roaming Millennial and Christina Hoff Summers are the biggest speakers there. And then everyone else is like people who have like 2,000 followers on Twitter. Yeah, it's like the that. it's like the remember the titans of fucking guest speakers. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like the A team got killed in the fucking plane crash, and now we've got these guys. <laughs> Jeez, that was a fucking shit show. But of course, this all all led into the topic of of race realism because that was essentially what the server was about. So then we started digging deeper into this, and then I got JF uh, JF on a few times, and then and then th- uh, we started talking about this subject. And now, uh, a destiny, you don't seem none too pleased about this. 
Yeah, I guess if we want to hop into that. So my main problem with this kind of stuff is um, you have, so you've got normative claims and you've got descriptive claims, right? So on the descriptive side of things, you describe um, scientific fact, right? Like the house is blue, right? And then on the normative side of things, you have um, what we ought to do with the house, right? So let's say the house is blue, so we should destroy it, right? The normative claim that we should destroy it is, is, a, is a claim of what we ought to do with it. And then the descriptive claim is um, that the house is blue. The problem that I have with people, um, especially JF, is that it seems like what happens is, is we get a whole bunch of really toxic normative claims that are built off of descriptive claims. So for instance, there are people that believe that race is real. Um, there is a huge difference in IQ between black people and white people. Therefore, um, people like Terry McCarthy or the alt-hype will say things like, we need an, a white ethno state of the US. We need to get rid of all of the brown people. And then when people challenge these kinds of assertions, these normative assertions, people like JF will show up and they'll defend the descriptive claim without really commenting on the normative. You know, JF will show up and he'll say, oh, well, the science is kind of correct or you know in, in some ways he's kind of correct that race is real but then they never like make any kind of comment on the normative side of things it's my that's that's my pretty big problem with it yeah yeah you were saying that the like the main issue you have is now now people are starting to say race is real therefore and then the extreme right will start saying things like maybe we should you know remove a certain race out of certain areas to you know better the society that we're living in and that's something you obviously have a problem with and i i want to say right now like for people who are watching who, who may be alt-right or whatever i while i believe race is real i am saying in no way that we should judge someone based on averages uh based on what we think their iq might be uh we should t treat everyone um as an individual because uh it's just inhumane in my opinion to, to take an average and then fucking, you know, banish people because of so-and-so. And I just think that's fucked up, in my opinion. So I'm kind of curious, just, to, just when you say that, just based on your conversations, when you say race is real, can you elaborate on that? Well, yeah. Uh, well, looking at all the different races, uh, there are a lot of, of differences um, within all the races, such as, you know, bone structure, uh, you know, uh, a certain races being more intelligent, Sorry, what? With, with black people, I mean, uh, they 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 have a higher increased chance of having sickle cell anemia. I so mean, that's that, not. That, well, but so even that's not necessarily that, that's true. That's a genetic difference in a race. But that's and, not. I mean, so well, firstly, that's not necessarily true. So the sickle cell anemia. Hmm? So so that particular thing that you're talking about is really only impactful to blacks that lived in the sub-Saharan region. It it was like a response developed right. to malaria. So there are plenty of black people that don't have. Um, that innate defense, or, or I'm sorry, that innate right, vulnerability. But as an average, that will show that will that that is that well, is but, a common. Yeah, sure, but this is this is the problem, right? Is that I could show you a white person that would have this trait, and I could show you a black person that doesn't have this trait. So, what is the usefulness in saying black people have this thing and white people don't? Well, I I think we're talking about averages and and the probability. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, I mean, there, there's always an exception to. To some sort of rule. I mean, the, the it, you know, some some of those developments are are environmental, but they're, you know, yeah. So there when are, I there are genetic um, differences. Yeah. So the, the, you can find some genetic differences. I guess my only question is like, what is the value in recognizing this difference, right? Like in a hospital, you would never say like, oh, well, he's black, therefore this. You would you would do like some sort of sequencing, or you would take a test to find out, you know, what what the exact answer is. You would never classify people in this way, right? And then there are differences we have, like for instance, like blood type. Do you think that people of blood type A should be a different race than people of blood type B, or people AB, or people O? Like, do you, would you classify these people as different races? Like, sure, there could be differences, but is there any value in grouping them as, an, as entirely different subspecies or races of people? Well, the answer to whether it, there is value in grouping people, the answer is quite simple, is if my prediction is better than random following my grouping, then my grouping provides some information. I don't think that Geek Tulu was presenting a case where every black people has sickle cell anemia. He's just saying, if you divide people into the, the group black people versus white versus Asian, you will end up with the group of black people 
being more likely to have sickle cell anemia. That's information that can be useful to a doctor, that can be useful to people in general. I mean, f some of the examples of the use, because um, here Stephen started with the question of normative claims. And it's true, I will admit this, I don't often comment on normative claims, but there's a reason for this. It's that my opponents in the race realist debate are so stupid that they try to fight me on the factual ground. They are so bad at what they do that they come on the public space and they start claiming false stuff such as race does not exist. Now, I'm happy to go on that ground today with Destiny and I think that's why we're here. So let's dig deep into this. I do believe that there are some things and Handy seem to, to totally reject the use of race in personal choice and discrimination. I do believe that there are instances of of correct personal choice that you can do based on race, which is not something that I, I would personally reproach. I'll give you one example and I'd like to hear you guys on this. Is it fine for you guys to have racial preferences in your sexual preferences, to have certain races of people that you prefer having sex with? Yes, I'd, I'd say so. Because yeah. it's more of a, of a natural thing of uh, who you're attracted to, I guess, right? Like people who have like yellow fever, you know, you know, are, are down for only Asians. I have a few friends like that. Uh, and no one finds that racist. So, I mean, I'm sure there are people out there who'd be like, oh my God, you're fetishizing Asians, but it's just they, they prefer Asians or something, right? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a white dude and, and fucking, I, I, I love olive skinned women. Like period, <laughs> there's just something about it. Okay, before we get too far down on this topic, so earlier you said if my grouping is better than random, it can give me some information. So I don't disagree with that. But if your grouping is better than random, that doesn't give you a reason to create a separate race of people. So for instance, if I were to group people based on height, I could probably make some predictions about these people, or, or by weight even. Actually, that would be a better one. If I group people by BMI, I could make predictions, pretty accurate predictions about the health of said people, especially in regards to things like diabetes or hypertension um, but just because I would have a group of people that are above a certain BMI I wouldn't by extension of that say well here is a different race of people right no it's it's true and it's not based on the information that we can obtain on certain diseases like sickle cell that we classify races races they were first classified really from observations from visual observation and then later in fact within the last two decades we've begun having genetic data that seems to confirm that the, the general group that we characterize as blacks whites asians they do refer to some genetic reality and in fact when we place all the genetic information that we get on humanity into a computer and we ask the computer to separate these groups as best as he can of course the races come as a natural division that the computer finds quite easily so somehow the recent data on genetics in human simply confirms the old idea of race that we had of course it's not a it's not a 100 clean boundary of course there is race mixing of course there are people who are white who do have genes that come from black ancestry that's all fine because we recognize that we have millions of ancestors in the end and so we're all a mix of genes but that doesn't mean that the categories are meaningless in fact from a genetic standpoint we can tell with pretty high certainty uh, where your ancestors come from based on your genes today Okay, so firstly, the claim that this is something that you have to elaborate on because I don't think even you believe this. You say that genetic information today confirms old ideas of race. So old ideas of race, what do you mean by that? Because there are extreme claims made by phrenologists, for example, in the past that are definitely not confirmed by... Yeah. So I, I just mean the instinctive division that we've made of races, the idea that black people differ from Asians, that Asians differ from, from whites, and that uh, Native Americans, for example, are distinguishable from uh, the three other groups. So that kind of idea. What I mean is that the subdivisions that we've made based on visual characteristics of facial appearance were not completely uh, wrong. We, we were not beside the track. In fact, genetic information confirms that these divisions exist. 
Okay, but even if these divisions do exist, even if you can cluster genes in some way to say that, like, well, this ancestry probably originated here, or this people's ancestors probably originated here, what is the argument for? It seems like that you don't have these clusters of genes that describe important traits that would make them worth classifying as a different race of people. Or do you, do you think that there are traits that exist, that, that, like phenotypes that can be described by gene clusters that are unique to ancestors of people? Oh, well, I mean, we have some cases of characteristics that are specific to a village or to, to a given uh, subpopulation and that for, for which we have genetic knowledge. Uh, one example is a special disorder that affects my people, actually, the French Canadians. Uh, we have a genetic disorder that, that really emerged in Quebec, and we know exactly the line of families. We know pretty much everyone who has that disorder. It's a handful of people. Those are very rare genetic diseases, so they're easily tractable. Uh, there are other features that are more complex for which we don't have single genes. And in fact, we know that we probably won't ever find single genes because we know that the, the, the behavior is too complex. IQ is one of them. So IQ, we can measure it across races. We can make averages across races. And it's pretty established at this point. And I'd like to hear if you disagree. It's pretty established at this point that the black and Asian and white IQ differ on average. Um, okay, so firstly, just to speak to your first thing, so you keep going back to these very precise geographical things. I wouldn't disagree on this, but this you must understand then that this is different than race then, right? That, that if you talk about small geographical subsets of people, this is a different grouping now that you've moved to, which I would agree with versus race. We can go back to the um, sickle cell example where there are specific African Americans that lived in specific geographic areas that were exposed to malaria that developed this thing. But the grouping here then falls on geographic lines, not on racial lines, right? Yeah, so uh, what I explained, and I'm currently preparing a video about this. It's true that I've never talked about this on the public space, but I'm currently preparing a collaboration with Mati Buddha. And what I explained in that video is uh, the idea of race realism is not a statement about the number of races there are in humans. In fact, I recognize that we can divide humanity in five races or 600 races. It's just that as you progress between dividing it in five and dividing it in 600, of course, you're going to observe different phenomena. First, if we divide it in 600, we are all mixed race in some way. Uh, the, if you divide it in five, then maybe some of us are not a mixed race, to, at least in, in terms of the majority of our genome not being mixed race. Uh, these are arbitrary choice, and I recognize it. The reality of race is not the fact that there are X races. It's the fact that genetics in humans are clustered. And yes, they are clustered at multiple level, at the very local level and, and, and very limited in time, like 100 years ago, and also at the very macro level over hundreds of thousands of years in terms of separated lines of ancestry uh, developing over, uh, over these hundreds of thousands of years. Okay, I don't disagree with most of what you've just said, but this is not what most people that talk about race realism say. So when you say, for instance, that whether we divide into five or 600 races, that's something that I obviously can agree with you with. Different genetic clusters will lead to different types of um, phenotypes that can be classified in whatever way that you want to. Um, when you speak to the idea that IQ is something that um, is incredibly complicated, it's the, the amalgamation of, of tons of genes scattered across the genome, um, that it's very hard to pinpoint you know, which clusters even contribute massively to intelligence or variance in intelligence. These are things that I would, of course, agree with. But the race realists don't usually make these claims. Usually the claim is we know for a fact where intelligence comes from. We know which genetic clusters attribute to can be attributed to intelligence. And we can point to black people or white people and say that white people possess more of these genetic clusters that make them more intelligent. Do you recognize that most race realists would claim that that difference in IQ between black and white people, that is a genetically intrinsic thing, that it's not something that's influenced by anything beyond like intrinsic genetics, the variation? Well, you've listed a couple of things there, and mm -hmm. I disagree with your characterization of what race realists say. Uh, for example, what I consider to be one of the best race realist speaker on the in the entire internet is alternative hypothesis. He does not state that we know the genes that underlie intelligence. Now, he does state that the uh, the 
the, the gap in IQ that we observe between black, whites, and Asians is likely to be of genetic origin. Now, that's a different statement from saying that we know the genes and that we know uh, th- how they affect the, the IQ through physiology. If I may just uh, butt in for a second and read some super chats here. <clears throat> so we have Pop TV TV, two bucks. Fuck him up, Frenchie. Uh, Ragnar Alberhart, two bucks. Uh, hashtag Kumai, hashtag blood for the blood gods. Uh, uh, Simon Skolda, five bucks. I actually liked Destiny when he debated no bullshit and patty politics. However, now he just uses a uh, Talmudic tactics and acts completely uh, disingenuous. Uh, white slave, five bucks. Andy, have JF say this, please, and lis- um, uh, listen very carefully. I shall only say this once. JF, may you say listen that? Ver- listen very carefully. I shall say this only once. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Leo, <laughs> a rider storm, 10 uh, New Zealand dollars, whatever it is. Uh, my first super chat ever. Thank you very much. I'm gutting that I missed the roasting yesterday. No, you didn't. You did not miss anything. Don't you fucking worry. Could you re-upload it? Nope. Uh, it's shamefully. I'm shamefully addicted to drama. It wasn't just drama. It was beyond that. Edwin Boyette, five bucks. So if JF says, please be kind and thoughtful with normative claims, then your main point is nullified and all you have left is minutia. You know what? Uh, I have no idea what that means. <laughs> well, what that guy oh, was say- what that guy was saying is that if JF would go forth to make positive normative claims, that I wouldn't have an issue with JF anymore. Is what that guy was claiming. Uh, ah, yeah. okay. Uh, Code guy, five bucks. Andy geek, leave the debate to JF and Destiny. You are being shitty moderators. What do we do? We're trying <laughs> to massage we the conversation. <laughs> yeah. get, it, get it going. Hey, Jesus Christ! Big fat Brian, five bucks. BMI is not constant. BMI can be changed. Uh, and I'll read the last one here for now. Uh, Leo Ridestorm, five bucks again. Thank you. I only want to say, I only want to fuck skinny pale nerds. I must be racist against buff tan guys. But seriously, people can't help help who they're attracted to. All right. That's good, girl. Okay, so responding yeah. to JF, what you said about the alt hype. Do you not see a problem with the statement that we haven't figured out exactly how genes can influence IQ and we don't know which loci or whatever like the the I, the heaviest IQ contributing genes are from but we know it's the genes that type of descriptive claim doesn't make you uncomfortable no it doesn't make me un- uncomfortable because i know the scientific tools that allow us to make these claims the scientific tool that allow us to understand that IQ is highly influenced by genes is uh, twin studies that's actually one of the tools twin studies allow you to to determine if something comes from the genes without knowing what the gene is. Do you uh, do you understand with this statement? Do you agree with this statement? I would have to look at the specific um, twin study because it's not necessarily true. Well, it, the, the function of a twin study is always the same. It's to distinguish the environmental effect from the genetic effect. And you typically do that by comparing monozygotic twins who have the exact same genes and dizygotic twins who only sh- share 50% of their genes. Yeah. And so if you have two individuals that are literally the same individuals from the genetic perspective and you you raise them either in the same environment or different environment, you have a, a, essentially an experiment of nature. You have what happens to the, the, the exact same genes in two different conditions. Whereas when you have uh, twins that are dizygotic, what you have are twins that, uh, that do not have the exact same genes. And, and so you have an experiment where nature can have an effect on two different two people who are different at the genetic level and so this allows you to tease out the difference it allows you to tease out the effect the percentage of effect that you could expect from the environment and the percentage of effect that you can expect on the threat trait from genetics in an ideal circumstance sure depending upon your shared and unshared environment sure yeah I mean, I understand that the the theory behind like a twin study. Um, I'm just not yeah. aware of like the the definitive set of twin studies that have ruled that difference in IQ can be explained due to genetics. Yeah, so these studies repeatedly shown that the that IQ is influenced by genetic, and that the the percentage of variance in the populations that are studied by these twin studies is from fifty percent to eighty percent explained by variance in genes. 
rather than variance in environments. Can you, what what is that study, or or rather like a collection of them? I'll go look them up after because I'm not familiar with these. Yeah, well, I can send you a link. The alternative hypothesis actually keeps a list of all of these studies. So, hey, hey Dustin, did there. you mm-hmm. say uh, uh, someone? Hang on. Someone, uh, David Cedarwood, he threw two bucks, thanks. Uh, Destiny said that he'd be fucked if Alt-Hype was on a stream. Did you say that? Um, probably at one point in time, yeah. The descriptive is like very, very difficult to discuss here, and I'm just like starting to get into all of it, so. Yeah, so what's your thoughts on this? Because, like, I mean, like, do you believe that race is not real? So, well, my problem is twofold. My problem mainly lies in the normative claims where people like JF or people like Alt-Hype will go on to say that ethnostates should exist. Um, and these types of normative claims, I think, are, are really bad. Even if, even if we were to see the entire um, descriptive claim that there is some difference between races that could be accounted for genetically, even if we assumed that, I think the normative claims are still bad. But I don't think the descriptive claims have been settled um, at all. Like... Um, yeah, so 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 it's even more damaging at that point. But do you think that people just not talking about it would be it be better? Because, like, I mean, I I know no you're talking saying, about right? it is good. I, my first and foremost, my my goal of everything is 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 to find more truth, right? To, when I do research or when I have discussions, is to get closer and closer to the claims that are true. Um, and I think most people should value conversation that way. So I think there's value in discussing it. Um, it's just that there's a difference between. Um, like let me let me give an example and then two types of people that could approach this example okay um let's say that i was an intelligence researcher okay and let's say that i wanted to create a world where everybody was living together and working in the optimal way right because when when civilizations work together we tend to thrive together um typically that's how human history has gone so i start researching and i find hey okay well there are intrinsic differences in the way that um you know phenotypes are presented across populations of people I'm going to use this understanding in order to help as many people as possible. Um, for a real world example of this, we can use dyslexia, right? Dyslexia, if you had dyslexia a long time ago, it was pretty shitty. Um, you're probably gonna be a really shitty reader if you even learn to read or write. Um, whereas today, if we can identify a child early on with dyslexia, you know, we change the education a little bit and they can read and write just as quickly as any normal person, right? So if mm-hmm. I was coming at the research from a compassionate point of view, that would be my goal, okay? I can identify differences in races, um, that, that can be attributed to like an entire cluster of people, right? That I can find these and then I can use that information to better all of mankind. The problem is that people like Ryan Falk look for these differences and their ultimate goal is usually to exclude groups of people, that they wanna forcibly remove people from population. So they wanna see people um, separated out from white people, that they wanna create like a, um, you know, a, a white ethno state that only has white people and they wanna try to, to exclude as many people as possible. And I don't think that path forward is a healthy path for the entire planet. It just doesn't seem to work as well um, when you've got countries that are fucked and destable and, and all sorts of things like that yeah yeah i'm with you on that like for sure i uh i want people like, like i started the stream by saying like i'm very against a white ethno state i mm-hmm. think but people like ryan Falk, inhuman. people like tara mccarthy people like i could go on the lauren rose are tons of people um lauren southern there are tons of people everybody that that has made this claim like we must abandon civic nationalism like all of the alt hypothesis guy um jf to some extent has, has been on video saying things that he would be okay with an ethno state there are lots of people though that do go forth with that normative claim that an ethno state would be a preferable thing and then they base this off of extreme descriptive claims like you know, all of the variants in, in IQ between black people and white people can be attributed to genetics. Therefore, get all the blackies out of the country so that we can have our pure white ethno state. I, I, I think, think, well, I think I mean, that there's lots of straw men in there. And so I'd like to dig in there and also ask you guys back the question because Steven has still not un, uh, answered my question whether it's fair for someone to have sexual preferences for certain races. You two have uh, uh, responded, but not him. But on the question of the ethno state, uh, I don't know that these people are necessarily saying that we would exclude people violently, which you seem to be suggesting. At least that's not what I've ever proposed. I believe that an ethno state could be established in a pacific manner. And I will say that the, on, on another show, on your show, Andy, we were discussing about the fact that white civilizations have improved the entire world, whether we like it or not. Mm. We were discussing this in the, the case of rage and our claim that the white man has actually improved Africa. Africa today wouldn't be as good at it, as it is if it wasn't that there was a white civilization in Europe developing and producing technology and producing models of law, models of individual liberty don't you guys agree 
that in the history of mankind, white ethno states have actually led the path forward for individual liberty, for democracy, for advance, advancement in technologies. Don't you think that there were like like the white ethno states such as the US as it was founded or many European countries as they existed within the last few hundred years ago? Don't you think that some of the best things that were produced on this planet and that have improved the entire planet come from white ethno states? Uh, from what I've researched, yes, it's 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 a bit, you know, people would hear that and think it's racist, but it's racist, but true. You know what I mean? Uh, but where we are now currently and where we have like where our Western civilization is now, I believe that we could obviously all work together. But I understand what you're saying, JF. Yeah. How about oh, you, Destiny? What do you so, think? okay, so, because I, I, I'm sorry, I haven't responded to your one question yet because there's still pre-stuff. I don't want to jump into later things um, about whether or not you can date somebody and have it be um, uh, racist or not. So, th for the first thing, and this is goes back to my central problem with you, you say, I have not advocated for a violent ethnostate, but I've listened to you talk to Ryan, and you've said that the, the highest chance of an ethnostate occurring is usually out of, like, violent circumstances, that it's usually once things have gotten really desperate that these ethnostates will emerge. And you should know, I don't know if you do or not, but you should know that when you implicitly support via your descriptive claims groups of people that do advocate for the violent removal of people such as like Tara McCarthy or these other more extreme race realists that even if you yourself aren't in favor of a violent ethno state if you're willing to back up all of their descriptive claims and then say well yeah I'm in favor of an ethno state that people are going to look at that as like your tacit approval of of a violent ethno state that that, that could be a, a, real, a realistic way to interpret your point of view there are many layers of falsehood here. Okay. Uh, first, I do not think that Tara McCarthy has advocated for the removal of legal citizens from her state violently. I believe that w the only thing that where she advocated violence was against yeah. illegal invasions of her country. Can we, t uh, to that, that claim in particular, I have a two and a half minute video. Can we watch it? It'll take two and a half sure. minutes. Sure. And then I'll read Super Chats uh, in a sec, but go ahead. Can, am I able to chat in this Super, or in our discussion? Uh, what do you mean? Like, how do I, can I put a message to you guys in this Google Hangout? Is there like a chat somewhere? Yeah, yeah. 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 chat to the right. Okay. On the top left there. Uh, hey, Geek, do you know how to, are you able to, to play that through voice meter? Uh, no, I don't, I don't have voice meter set up. I, I need to actually get, <laughs> get on. Can we, we can all just start it at the same time and then watch it from start to It's two and a half minutes. It's pretty quick. Sure, and then I'll 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 describe to to everyone what we're listening to here. In oh, fact, they're not I'll able the, to hear. It. Well, yeah, they should be able to hear it. Okay. No, no, because this is Hangouts. I'm getting my OBS set up ne for next week to get this shit. But I'm gonna here. I'm gonna I'm gonna spam it in the chat here. So everyone, there you go. Spammed in the chat. Click that link. We're gonna watch that right now. All right, three, all right, so, two, or two, I'm, one, go. All right, lots of people have been asking this, so I'll answer it for you. How do you physically deport the millions of non-whites? And if they refuse, what then? Kill them? Okay, so this is obviously a concern that comes up when people talk about ethno-nationalism. First of all, we absolutely have a right to deport all illegal residents by any means necessary, including threatening them at the point of a gun and killing them if they resist okay that is the situation with invaders if someone has invaded our country illegally illegally entered our country uh, we have the right to remove them by any means necessary okay and now there are different situations now we have uh then there are people who have resident visas okay so we have a resident visa but they are not a citizen so they are legally resident in the country but they are not a citizen what we can do is we can revoke their visas and then ask them to leave. And if they do not leave, they are now legally resident in the country and we can remove them by any means necessary. Hit the link, guys. And now you move on to people um, who are citizens, who have either been naturalized after spending about five years in the country, um, who are uh, anchor babies, whose parents came into the country illegally, had them in the hospital in the US, and then they became US citizens by default. Um, and people who were born in the country of legal, legally resident or legal citizens in the US, for example. So I believe that we should revoke 
um, the anchor baby citizen status because it was acquired through unlawful means. And thus, you know, that's an ill-gotten gain. And thus they are illegal, so we should deport them. Jesus. Um, as for people who are naturalized citizens, it may be possible to revoke the naturalized citizenship in some cases. Um, as for people who are citizens, who were born of citizens in the United States, um, I believe we need to incentivize them financially right, so, so to move out of the United States. Yeah, sorry. I'm getting, uh, oh, sorry. Okay, okay, sorry. I'm getting, I'm getting voice meter set up next week. We have a, an OBS new setup that we're going to do so we can actually play the video. So I sent the link there. I'll put it for anyone who's interested watching this post uh, it being live. I'm going to put the link uh, on the bottom of the, the description bar. But that was Tara McCarthy. Uh, mm -hmm. Destin, do you want to just give everyone a quick rundown? Yeah, sure. Of what so, e so here's the quotes. And I'll focus on the first one, since this is what I'm sure JF is going to anchor his entire defense of this on. But she begins in the beginning by saying, we absolutely have a right to deport all legal residents by any means necessary, including threatening slash killing them. Now, I'm going to guess that JF, are you going to say that, well, she's talking about illegal residents, so that makes it okay? Is that what your response would be to that? No, I'm saying that she is entirely correct. Uh, yeah, she is correct. You have the right to remove uh, through physical force someone who invades your country. She is absolutely correct. Okay. In fact, hashtag Tara said nothing wrong. Sure. So by quote unquote invade your country, she is talking about people that are naturalized citizens and people that are actual citizens, people that have visas, um, all of these types of people she would consider invaders. So let's say you have two parents who are American citizens and you're born to them and you're now an American citizen but you happen to be Hispanic JF believes that Tara is right in saying that they should be forcibly removed from the country that is your claim no no I think that you missed our caveat at the end which was which that? is that if if the invaders are are uh, legal citizen that they acquired citizenship legally and she really distinguished between legally and illegally she said illegally they should be kicked out now she said, legally, we will have to try to encourage them naturally to leave the country. In other words, she's appealing to to our libertarian principle on that question. And she's saying, we're going to have to convince them that they should leave, but we, we will not be able to force them to leave. So I don't know how she ended that because it stopped in the middle of that sentence. I'm, I could bet she would go on to violence, but I can't deductively say that. But what about in the sentence before where she says that people who are naturalized citizens, that their citizenship can be revoked? Yeah, so she was talking about a specific subset of natural citizens who have been, in her view, naturalized illegally. Now she was talking view? specifically about... Uh, what, yeah, she, in her view, she, the anchor babies are being naturalized illegally, and she, she has actually a good uh, legal fund, foundation to claim this. Uh, anchor baby is when you come into a country, you quickly make a baby in the hope that this baby will allow you to get natural citizenship quicker because of immigration laws that are more uh, understanding for parents and especially for parents of a child who is born in the country. So in our view, it is an illegal act to make a baby knowingly for the purpose of getting citizenship in a country. It's an act of invasion. And in our view, it should be uh, called out for the illegality of it and it should be considered an illegal act. In fact, technically it is an illegal act if you if you plan it in a criminal fashion. But in, in practice, it is very often the case that these these acts cannot be uh, per prosecuted simply because the you cannot have evidence of intent very often. May I just butt in for one second? I want to tell the audience uh, I've decided uh, that I'm going to read Super Chats at the end of the show so I don't interrupt these two in their thought process. And secondly, uh, so sorry about that, but I will stick around for a half an hour, hour after the show's done to hang out, read the chat and stuff. And so just gonna do that so I don't interrupt uh, too often, as well as Tara McCarthy is watching in the uh, in the ch uh, chat right now. Do you, Tara wants to come in and swing on by? Uh, would you guys be all right with that? Cause I think if we're gonna be talking about her point of view, it might be better just to have her in. What do you guys think? I think JF can probably defend her point of view better than she can. She's not very intelligent. 
I think Jeff would do a better job at defending her point. Yo, 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 yo so, internet blood sports. Sp- so speaking very, speaking very clearly to what, <laughs> speaking very clearly to what you just said, JF. So hey, Tara, follow me by the way. Follow me. I'll follow you back and I'll send you the link. So JF, your defense of her saying that we should deport illegal residents is that it's up to her to define what illegal is because she oh. clearly separated the category of naturalized citizens via the anchor baby stuff, which is something that you can say you want it to be illegal, but it's not illegal. It's part of the immigration policy of the United States right now, whether you like that or not. And then secondly, she differentiated and said people that were naturalized through other means, she would have them deported forcibly as well because she considers them to be here, quote unquote, illegally, where that that word illegal doesn't mean legal by legal definition, but legal by whatever her personal moral law or whatever is in regards to these issues. I I think you missed the end of that statement. The end of that statement is that she distinguishes between two kinds of to- naturalized citizens. One of them has obtained their status illegally, and she says they should be deported based on the, the fact that they have committed illegal actions. The other portion, which, which became citizens legally uh, through legal means, she says we're, we, we would just have to encourage them to leave, but we couldn't force them. Well, so she's not why would she make a video that saying that people that are here illegally need to be punished under the law? That's not the purpose of this video and that's not what she said she specifically said people that were naturalized through other means if they're naturalized through a legal process they're a legal citizen how could you tell them that they have to leave without using some sort of extra legal procedure or having her own arbitrary definition of what is legal or illegal yeah, I think um, you're just you're just confused there she's just appealing to their willingness to yeah. leave the country Oh, well, Jeff, didn't she say in that video that her uh, that we should give financial incentive for people who are legally born here to leave? At the very, very end, that was for her last group of people. No. Okay, but, but the thing is, if there if there is a group of people or a certain a certain group of people that are that are in your country illegally, um. So is your is your stance that we should say, hey, would you please leave? And they say no, and we go, no, all right, and, and just leave it at that. No, we 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 have to we have to enforce laws that we've created to to keep our society functioning the way that. Sure. So these we are weasel to. words. No one is talking about not enforcing a law. Nobody is talking about letting illegals stay. She's very specifically talking about people that are in the country that are of the wrong race that she feels shouldn't be here. That's why she's talking about revoking these. Hi, I'm actually here oh, if you want God. to hear my opinion. I, really I don't, don't think she's talking about race. I think she's talking Hello, about Tara. illegal <laughs> citizenship. Would you like me to state my opinion or do you want to keep stating it for me? I'd rather state what's in the video than hear you weasel out of it. Okay, but that's go a two-minute two video so from two years ago. So, um, I I stand by deporting illegals, and that is everybody done. does. Nobody cares. Move on to the interesting part. That is done. I just want to clarify that when I say at the point of a gun, that is basically meaning what ICE does already. So that's nothing new. Um, but yeah, I want to do things in the most amicable way possible, and actually, the primary way that I want to do things is uh through incentives through basically paying people to leave so what do you do if you have let's say you get two hispanic people they come from the country of mexico they come to the united states legally um they get uh, naturalized and then they have a child and that child says i don't want to leave even though they're really 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 brown how do you get that child out of the country if they won't accept a financial incentive to leave to me that's that's not an issue it i just want to reverse the trends so if there are some people who really want to stay it's not a huge problem to me. It's more like, which way are we going? Are we are we uh, maintaining the uh, main group of the country, or are we actually working with policies to get rid of the main group? So what groups of people are you focused on getting rid of and keeping? I want the primary ethnic group of the country. What is the primary ethnic immigrate. group? What do you mean by that, ethnic? Well, in America, it's uh, white. White people, is white is not an ethnicity, dude. Do you mean Scottish people? Do you mean British people? Well, do you mean Anglo-Saxons? Yeah, I think like, being dishonest. What do you I mean am I being dishonest? What she means? She means Caucasians who form the majority of the United States. Okay, so like, so somebody like me whose background is fifty percent Cuban, am I white enough to stay in the ethno state, even though I'm, half of my background is Cuban? Or what about somebody like Nicholas Fuentes, who who is half or a quarter Hispanic or whatever? Are, are these people white enough for the ethno state? Uh, well, if you ask most people. Um, who are involved in what I'm doing, people like Greg Johnson, who has various different articles about this website, you know, it's 
it's there are degrees of difference and the people who are most different to us for example sub-saharan africans who've literally just flown over one generation ago would be first priority to encourage them to move back to their ancestral homeland and it and it would go like that okay so what 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 is the ultimate goal like what is the ultimate group of white people that you want to keep like what is that what is that group of white people they're just people that look white or well as i've said elsewhere i'm not working towards a specific like oh things are going to be like a utopia when we have x percentage white people in the country that's not what i'm doing i'm simply trying to reverse current trends which are going to lead to an obliteration of all western countries if they continue you mean an Did obliteration of white people as the majority demographic you tell me asking something uh yeah, why, why 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 do you want only white people here like, like what's the reason like what's your your points but but i just want to point you guys keep strawmanning her she didn't say only white people here yeah. she, she said, said oh, she oh, wants to reverse the trends white. to keep it so majority white oh my god the point that okay, okay sure sure, sure. <sighs> it's I'm very sorry. frustrating it is okay. jf i agree <laughs> okay okay sorry sorry so so who who do you want primarily to leave because what i i just heard you say and this is all right, all right calm down i'm just what I, I'm hearing is that you want mainly Caucasians here, right? So why do you want that? What's your points and why do you want that? Well, number one, if you look at the Founding Fathers and what they wrote, the United States of America was founded by white people for white people. That's not true. You're lying. Yes, it is. And their posterity. Where did they write that? Has. That's not true. Okay, you obviously don't have knowledge on this topic. Yeah. I have way more knowledge than you. I promise I do. First no, of all... you don't. If you're not aware of this, I'm then, very much aware of this, okay? Firstly, that posterity is never defined as white people. Secondly, your current working definition of white people would not have matched any definition of white people that the founding fathers would have had. It would have been Anglo-Saxons. And you can find specific quotes by people like Benjamin Franklin that will describe people that you consider today as white as swarthy, which was their way of saying dark-skinned or brownish, right? That okay, you're, you're really, you're really nitpicking here. Nitpicking? Uh, this is central to your claim. Says free white men in the Constitution originally. So, <clears throat> anyway, alternative hypothesis has an entire video on this. Can you explain uh, quotes from the founding one. fathers that specifically describe like Spaniards and Germans as swarthy? Then, can you tell me why they would explain yeah, them in I that way? I believe it was actually in uh, the 1920s they decided on their definition of white, and they decided that. Asian Indians were not included. And what does the 1920s have to do with the Founding Fathers, Tara? Well, this is the history of the U.S. and it's, it's I know, and it seems like you don't know it very well. So I'm asking you, where in the initial Founding Fathers did they have a definition of white people that includes all people that look white and this is who the country should be for when like 90% of them were Anglo-Saxons, not just generalized white people like you view them today? <clears throat> But uh, Destiny, it seems that the point you're making right now is that they were poorer than than Tara's own definition of today's ethnicity, of today's uh, United States major ethnicity. Tara started by stating that America was founded by white people. Do you agree? No. Because the definition of white people is important here. Terra doesn't recognize, ironically enough, because of multiculturalism, Terra doesn't recognize that her working definition of white person is going to be dramatically different than the definition of a white person in the, in the 1700s. You're the only one autistic enough to not understand that, that Terra's definition does not matter here. Do you agree that the founding fathers of America had a skin that was white and that if they were to go to the grocery store today, someone would say, hey, here's Jeff, a white Jeff, person. Uh, uh, sorry, your mic is a little bit roboting right now. Do, do you want to just like try turning your mic off and on? That usually works. Sorry. My 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 question here is, is, is granted, yes, our, our founding fathers were white. They were white. But it, it, the Constitution was designed, it, it, you know, for for all people to be created equally. It didn't say specifically no, one that's race. that's not what I'm referring to in that point. When they say all people created equal in the Declaration of Independence, they're actually talking about there is no right to um, kinghood, basically. That's why they're writing that to the British king so that they can start their own state. That it's no, not talking about all people being equal. Obviously, they didn't believe that they had slaves, you know. Don't you think that civilization has um, evolves and changes throughout, you know, the years and people get 
smarter and technology evolves and civilizations evolve. Therefore, like if we're going to look at the past and go with the past, then we still have, you know, a, lo a lot of fucked up laws, a lot of fucked up things happening. Women wouldn't oh, have absolutely. the right to vote. Um, so, but it would so be a complete fallacy to say just because something is an older practice that it's therefore wrong. I think you'd agree with that. I mean, yes, there have been yeah, some messed up yeah. things in the past, but yes, there have been lots of, lots of things that actually work in the past. And I happen to believe that one of those things that works is having ethnostates, which is the norm for all of history. Multiculturalism is a modern experiment that's been happening since the 1960s onwards. And from what I see, it creates far, far more problems than it does benefits. Well, what, wasn't, from what you wasn't see? ancient Rome a multicultural society? Yeah, I think that's the reason it fell. Uh, the no, I think, I think uh, all, th I this think is all a last argument. Fall. Yeah, no, uh, this is a last, this is a last cause. Um, do you consider white people, or do you consider Jewish people white people? I'm just curious. Well, I, from my um, interaction with Jewish people, it seems that they don't consider themselves white, so I think it would be unreasonable to consider them white. Okay, so if they considered you, themselves white, you, you would consider them white? What about a Hispanic that considered himself white? Would you consider them white because that's what they consider themselves as? You dodge that question magnificently, by the way. Actually, uh, some of my friends who actually support this are, are partly Hispanic and could technically, you know, be classed as Hispanic, but because they, um, you know, they marry white people, they look white, they act white, they they are pro in group preference for whites. I have zero problem with them being here. Okay, so let me ask this one more time. Let's see if I can get to know. Let's say you have a group of 100 Jewish people and they actually consider themselves white. Do you consider them white then? White enough for your ethno state? I, I wouldn't have a problem with these people so long as they are not practicing in group preference for their own group. It's, it's well, they would consider that. themselves white, so they would be for the whole white group. Yeah, right? if they're in group preference for whites, okay. and what if they you look had, white, act white, etc., that's fine by me. What if you had, like, the, the milkiest the milkiest of milky brown person that would consider himself to be somewhat white? Do you think this person passes for your white ethnostate as long as they advocate for the white cause? Yeah. Okay. That's what I'm saying. So if it sounds like you're accepting of multiculturalism as long as the person like ad like this now it sounds like we're getting into like civic nationalism, right? Where if that person instead no, of white so is American crazy. Destiny, I can't believe you. Can you actually think straight? Like or are you just destined to straw man me <laughs> forever. Well, you're telling I mean, me that black people, you're, you're telling me that black people that have milky skin and Jewish people can identify as white people. And now you're asking me, are yeah, you I'm serious? <laughs> well, if they have white it skin, seems, it's likely that they have. To me like, that Tara has been maintaining a radically consistent view from I know, the beginning of that yep. interview. I know. She said at the beginning, our priority should be to exclude full-blooded sub-Saharan Africans uh, who came here from the first, from one generation. I mean, it seems that this girl understands what she's talking about. <laughs> For sure. Um, but, but that's not the majority of people that they're talking about deporting from the United States, JF. They're not talking about finding all of the 100% pure-blooded sub-Saharan Africans and rounding up the, you know, 100 of those that exist in the U.S. They want to take it much farther than that and talk about the, the Hispanic people that are living here, the black people that are living here, and then incentivize them to leave as well. They're not talking about only sub-Saharan Africans. Tara is working at reversing a current trend, trend in immigration, just like she stated right at the beginning. That's what she's interested in. And then you're pinpointing on special example and trying to catch her on the deep Details. I'm not trying but to catch her on a deal. I'm just curious what she's her working definition. There will be there will be ethnic there will be ethnic diversity <sighs> in the white ethno state. Okay, so destiny. let me explain what I'm doing. So it you seems like welcome. it's okay because you're a little slow, and I understand you're having trouble following along. So she said that she wants to keep the country a primary demographic by discouraging people that don't fit within that demographic from coming here. She wants to, as you said, reverse trends. Right. So what I'm curious is what is her working definition of white? Because I'm curious what trend she's trying to reverse. That's why I'm asking questions. Do you consider this person white? Do you consider this person white? So that we can get on the same page about the working definition of white person that she's using. Because up until this point, she, because to her own benefit, she tries to keep that ambiguous so that people can attack her position. And you're, of course, jumping to her defense because you want her to keep it ambiguous as well and only look at like the most extreme examples that everybody can kind of agree with. I'm trying to establish what her actual point is. Let me, let me, yeah, let me just hop in for one second. Uh, sorry, I'm just going to tell people in the chat We'll we'll do five more minutes with Tara, and then we'll get back to J JF versus uh, Destiny. And people are asking, why did you let Tara in here? 
it's because we were talking about here and this is an open house for people to have fucking discussions about whatever no matter what their beliefs are i believe in free speech that's why she's in here and she has the right to speak and i don't think us talking about her po point of view with her not in here is fair so so yeah we'll do five more minutes of this and then we'll move on but go ahead tara yeah, so most people who I know in this community, now you do get really crazy radical people who I'm actually not one to associate myself with, but you, <laughs> most people who I personally associate myself with and my personal view, but the reason why we're ethno-nationalist is because we actually don't believe that uh, most people from certain groups such as Sub-Saharan Africa, where the average IQ is 70, and there are many other differences as well, it's not just IQ. Um, I, we don't believe that they can fully ever assimilate into our into our countries, into our cultures, into our societies. And this is just well demonstrated. Look out the window and you can see it for yourself. That's not that's um, not an argument. You know that look out the window, that appeal to okay, anecdote is an incredibly stupid argument. A ton of statistics okay, what about the statistics that people that come from Africa to the United States are some of the most highly educated people here? That if you look at the average incomes, the average educational attainment of people that come to the United States from countries like Nigeria, usually far outpaces even European immigrants. I mean, what data do you want me to look at, Tara? Yeah, they are an exception, and they're oh, okay. obviously, when they come over as students, that makes sense. But the vast majority, as we see them flooding into Europe right now, of sub-Saharan Africans, these are highly violent people, these are very low IQ people, they are not capable of functioning in our society. Okay. Look at the look at, look at, look at how you set that up. Look at how you set that up, Tara. The people that come to the United States that, that come from Africa, well, these are people that are highly educated. You're pointing to my flaw in selection bias, which I agree no, with I'm you there. No, I'm talking about education. I'm talking about... So, oh, I'm, look, trying, help, I'm trying to help you a little. Go come ahead. in on scholarships and things like that. Yeah. It's like, they are the elite of I the know, elite. I know, that's exactly what I was just saying. I'm hey, sorry, Tara, I'll try Tara, to... may I ask you a question? No, wait, wait, because I want to finish this, because there's a big problem. She acknowledges that there's a bias in the selection of the group coming to the United States because mm -hmm. these are the best and brightest, right? These are the best and brightest. So, of course, Stephen, those people are going to be doing better. But then when you look at Europe and you go, well, look at all of these illegal immigrants, do you think middle class people from sub-Saharan Africa or upper class people are the ones illegally immigrating? No, of course not. You're applying a similar selection there where you're selecting for the lowest and most desperate people there as well. Why don't you acknowledge that? If you take an average sample of sub-Saharan Africans, their average IQ is 70. Yeah, period. of course. But what does this have to do with, with any of the arguments that we've been making? If I take an average sample of IQ of people from a small, dumbfuck town in Alabama or some shit, it's probably going to well, be very well, low compared see. to... It what? Does see. This is what I wanted to ask her was, okay... Also, so nice dodge on that question. Sorry, go ahead, Andy. Uh, uh, okay, you know, dodge. Uh, you know how... So basically, Tara, like you want mainly white people here primarily because what iq they function better in society is that why yeah well it, it is really quite a deep question you know i don't feel i can quickly go over this unfortunately well no it's fine but but my question is, is the, the answer is because brown people are scary andy sorry can but, you please stop destiny you are so immature i can't believe it hang on hang on, hang on. so so it, it is internet blood sports from time to time. So yeah, I don't, Andy, I, can you turn up the contrast or turn up the brightness on your camera? Because you're looking a little scary right now. I don't know if you got a lot of Italian in you or what, but holy shit, man, I'm getting a little nervous in here. I'm Portuguese. I'm Portuguese. Uh, oh, but, okay, okay. Uh, I want to bring up uh, a one thing, Tara. Like, if we're going to be deporting people who can't function in society, should we deport white people who have low IQs and cause a crime as well? Well, because they're not the functioning idea. in society as well. The idea is I am pro-eugenics, pro-voluntary eugenics, pro-voluntary pro eugenic policies. So that's the idea of how to deal with the less functional members of our own group. Of course, we have problems within our group. Um, the problem is we bring in far more problems when we import them from other, other nations. And, uh, you know, for, for 10,000 or, you know, it depends on, on your story of evolution, but for, for tens of thousands of years, we've been functioning as a group, you know, as Europeans. And we have different places, different classes, different roles in society. And it's kind of worked, generally speaking. The problem occurs when you start bringing in all sorts of other groups that have different interests, different in-group interests. They are competing with the main group um, and they are working to the detriment of the main group, which is us Europeans. And uh, I'm just saying it's just not in our best interest, and we shouldn't well, do it. I, 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 I have a real quick question. Uh, I don't know a whole lot about you, Tara. I heard your name. Uh, are you an American citizen? Um, 
Why are you asking that question? <laughs> well, uh, well, I, I mean, you're speaking for my country, so I was just kind of curious. Like, are are you in my country, and do you see these things? I'm trying to figure out, you know, why why you have a perspective about American, uh, you know, immigration. I'm just cur- I'm just curious. Is I just wanted to yeah. know. Yeah, sure. So uh, personally, I consider myself to have a genetic interest. Well, but you're dodging my America. question. I'm asking you: Are you an American citizen? I'm marrying an American. And my Wait, kids will be an you're kind of like you're getting naturalized here. You're the exact kind of person that we would want to kick out. <sighs> That's not even worth an answer. Well, I, it's true. But, but you're no, a foreign no, invader not. coming to my sure. country, marrying sure, somebody sure. to illegally invade my land to procure citizenship. This is disgusting. Hey, Tara, Tara. Like honestly, I I could see like your point of view. I don't agree with it. However, I see what you're saying. But Destiny and Geek Thulu just made a fucking massive point right now. Massive what point. Is their point. The point is, she wants people who aren't American citizens to leave, yet she is not American herself, and is marrying American yeah. citizen. She never, get- she never mentioned that she's totally against immigration. She says that immigration should take into account the possibility of these people adapting to our society in a way that is. Uh, that is positive for both the society and for themselves. That's not you true. That she you, qualifies that, as that one of the immigrants. That is a lie. Immigrants? It's based on no, race, that, JF. Answer, answer, based no, on race. Do you think that Tara is one of the people who could qualify under her definition as someone who would oppose or who would uh, who would have a negative effect on American societies? I don't think so. At least not by our definition, and in fact, not not by mine. And so she would be a positive addition to any society. Thank you, JF. Well, you know, it doesn't to me. It doesn't really matter. You know, I may not even live in the U.S. We might move to Europe. It's it's not really a huge deal to me. Um, I personally speak on American politics because everyone's interested in it, frankly. As an American, perhaps you don't understand, but America is a world superpower and it's pretty much the leader of Western civilization. So we all, all Europe, I think all white people have an interest in the well-being of America. And in addition to that, there are so many European countries. Of course, I do tend to talk about news events in those countries and policies. Um, but overall, the points I'm making on American policy can be applied across the board. They can be applied in Australia, they can be applied in the UK, they can be applied in Ireland. So to me, it's it's almost like I just use the US as just an example. And because most of the people listening are Americans. That's, I, that's, I, so firstly, I that's agree. what she just said I, is very untrue. Hold on. You, you cannot compare immigration to the United States, to countries in Europe. It works very differently because of the oceans that surround us. So that's not necessarily true. Um, for instance, as she herself pointed out, Africans or Chinese people that immigrate to the United States are being selected for based on no, being... No, you have diversity lottery. If the general principles are the same, I feel... Wait, 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 wait. You just... Well, I'm sorry, do you agree or disagree with what you said earlier, that, that most of the Africans coming here are coming from the most no, educated I'm backgrounds? about a specific group of Africans that you're talking about, the intelligent ones... Not a specific, so, any African that come. if I select for, for people coming from Africa to the United States, there's a decent chance that these people are going to be very educated, just because the well, only people from I Africa that can get exactly to the... exactly what proportion of Africans happen to be intelligent when they're coming to the U.S. Um, so do you think unintelligent Africans are just making the swim, or what? How, how do you think they get here? Well, they can just fly in on, on a tourist visa and just stay. It's not oh, that complicated. Oh, honey. Oh, my God. Do you think the average, like, broke-as-fuck person just buys an international flight and, and comes to the United States and just lands here? Well, if you've been to New York recently, you might notice that most of the people selling, um, you know, hats and things on the side of a road are illegal Africans. So well, I, 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 I There's a huge population of illegal Africans in the United States. Uh, do you have like a news story or something I can re- look at that's not from the Daily Caller or Breitbart? I'd be very interested to hear about all of these incredibly well, I destitute. Into, um, a- I don't care who you bumped into, basis, dude. So the, your anecdotes yeah, are worthless yeah, in this hey, conversation. Destiny, let her respond. Let her respond. Let her respond. Okay, I don't care about the personal story. Like, oh, well, I ran into one one time. Like, what does that mean? That means nothing. I see them every single time I. <laughs> I walk don't down care what you see, dude. On the side of the street. Anyway, look. Do you see them in New York as well? And irrelevant. You know, you're not talking about 
the real issue, which is should European people, people of European descent who have created countries, who, whose ancestors have built countries, should they be giving these countries away to people who actually despise them in many cases? Sure. So here's I the real no. issue. The real issue is we all share this planet. We're more connected than we ever have been. It's in everybody's best interest to make sure that everybody is working together and functioning as well as possible. That's the real issue. This fantasy that, and, and, and I take issue with this, my ancestors built fucking Europe. What the fuck did you do personally? You haven't contributed to the construction of your country or the creation of a government or the revolution to establish a, a new anything. Okay, so just As because you're... Sure JF can explain to you uh, g genetic propensity to certain actions is you know, it's literally in your blood. Like, what your ancestors have done, you are more capable of being able to do yourself. Oh, wait, hang on, hang on. Capable. It's there, sorry for interrupting, but then, then that, that means then black people who say we uh you made us slaves then we should take that into account as well we should be oh oh yeah you know what yeah i was a slave owner because my ancestor your ancestor was a slave and my ancestors owned slaves to my if knowledge you, only about one percent of white americans owned slaves so it's not a huge deal still though, still those still the what you're no, she's doing correct she's correct yeah. it's probably not the genetic characteristics yeah of but white that's not that's not a like but what well, that's that was so ask, bullshit the phenotype ask, of owning slave could probably only exist in a society where that phenotype is supported by phenotypes of other people around them that would agree with that idea that, that that's total bullshit jf and you know that's bullshit if there was a phenotype no, no. for a slave owner, that phenotype could not manifest itself in a society unless the other people around it tacitly agreed with it. Unless that as, single well, phenotype was it, able to... It most it's of societies and races from slaves don't stop races you from history. doing something. It's not because people around you don't stop you from doing something that they have a genetic propensity to like that thing or to support it tacitly, as you say. There is no, not necessarily a moral duty for people to revolt against slavery in a society where slavery is just being tolerated because it's being enacted by the most powerful people in that society who can afford slaves. That's very different. And as far as the genetic statement of uh, Tara goes and how it relates to that statement, I fully stand by her statement so when we have the civil war why wasn't it why weren't the one percent of slave owners just thrown out and then people are like oh well fuck we don't want to go to war like you just take because not all of us are slave owners it's very very few people just take the slave owners and we'll be at peace why would the entire south go to war like, then if you really think that whites have some kind of genetic propensity to slave ownership you should have a problem with africans because they're selling slaves right now I never said it. You're the one that's talking about how we have a genetic propensity to form stable governments, which I'm pretty okay, sure every well, government. Guys, hey, well, okay. Uh, I think we should probably move on from uh, this. Okay, uh, thanks for having obviously, me. Obviously, yeah, no worries, Tara. Thank you for being on. I appreciate that. Uh, uh, and yeah, we'll talk to you uh, soon, maybe in the future, if we're ever on a discussion about this. It'd be sure interesting thing. to have you. Yeah, because even though I disagree with you, uh, it's still interesting to hear the other point of view. Uh, yeah, so all the cool ways that we could export every brown person from the country. I'm... Hey, but destiny, but isn't She's it? She's learning as she leaves destiny. This is this is simply classless. Seriously, <laughs> I know. Jim. I would just like to say, just before I leave, actually, <laughs> uh -huh. please can everyone not listen to what destiny says I say because it's not true, mm -hmm. and I I personally. You know, this is actually a problem for me, people spreading rumors about what I'm saying. Wow. Uh, I'd rather you just come and listen to what I have to say, you know, take it from my own mouth and feel free to ask me questions anytime on Twitter or whatever. I'll answer you. Fair I enough. totally agree with that. Yeah. Uh, I hope that Twitter video or whatever was posted in chat. I think that she speaks pretty well. I think it's not very hard to divine like her, her intent from her words. Although people like JF will always be here to twist them in whatever way he sees fit. But. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to call one minute of silence because in this whole interview, I learned something that really, that really teared my heart apart. Tara McCarthy is getting married with someone else. <laughs> it's hard. It's very hard. So, Andy, do, 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 I'm, I'm just curious. Or the situation. Andy, I'm just curious in, in looking at you and in, in listening to. Were you able to listen to the entire video? Yes, yes. Right. So it's pretty obvious what she's getting at, right? That she wants to deport as many brown people as possible to keep like kind of a white. No, 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 no. Destiny, we started with a whole straw man here. She came here, explained her view, and now you're going back to the straw man after she left. That's fucking ridiculous. Let's have a discussion about the morality of using race as a construct for individual decision and political decision and stop straw manning Tara. We just spent 30 minutes trying to solve your straw man there. 
Okay, so Andy, do you see what I'm mean, talking about? After watching, after watching that video and, and, and hearing what I heard in the video, now that I have greater context to what she actually believes, like the things in that video aren't as... Uh, so finding people that have visas, revoking said visas, finding citizens that are naturalized via processes that she doesn't like, like anchor babies or whatever, and then revoking their naturalization, and then people that are naturalized through other ways, revoking their naturalization, and then citizens and trying to incentivize them to leave because of their race. None of that makes you uncomfortable because she came on and she sounded polite when she spoke? Oh, I, I, was, I was completely honest. I'm against uh, deporting people because their skin tone and the the uh, question i asked her about should we start deporting just dumb white people or white people who cause crime or let's say there's an area in america that has a lot of violence and mainly white people because it's just more uneducated or whatever should we just you know nuke it or just force everyone to, to leave i think that if we're gonna like if they're gonna try and make the perfect you know utopia that we should just start taking out all dumb people, no matter what race there are. You know what I mean? Like, I, mean, I, like, I, I can't take someone seriously that that, that talks about eugenics. I, I just, I mean, well, like this. Is, so this is kind of like what, what you just said earlier. About voluntary eugenics, voluntary, which is very different. Not, it's a little bit, but not really. But you probably wouldn't acknowledge you the similarities. The, the history of human civilization is voluntary eugenics. Um, if you really want to twist it around, I guess maybe. But it's not really so relevant to what we're talking about. about. It's something that we do on an everyday basis. We change laws so that some people are favored, other people are not favored. We do personal decisions in our reproductive life that influence the frequency of genes in the next generation. What she's talking about, voluntary eugenics, is simply to take into consciousness the fact that yeah, we can we can think about what are the, the the ideal genes for the future for our civilization, and we can try to to do our best to select those. I, I don't. I'm not sure I fully agree right, with but, her but, morally, but, but I think it's a very decent. Uh, it, it's it's totally wrong of you, in my view, to take to say that you cannot take her seriously just because she used those words. I, I mean, out of context, her video, like I saw no, I saw no problem with it. But when I get the context of, you know, like what 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 she's supporting, supporting that video with, it's just like, uh, I mean, yeah, she can she can say the sky is blue, and I can agree with that, and and I can agree with some of those things that are in that video. But when I have a greater context of of who she is, whether we like it or not, you, you know, we do have we do have moral uh, a moral thing that. That we deal with in this on a societal level, and we, we, I mean, we have to acknowledge that. But I don't even know what you're talking about. She's talking about making sure that your immigration policy does not destroy your country and your does not race of people. Such a reproductive, such a reproductive invasion. Can you at least that stop rebranding her words? Cannot even reproduce within the next thousand years. Don't you think it makes sense to be against reproductive invasion? She made it about race, JF. She wants to protect the, the, her group interests that she was talking about. She specifically spoke against when I mentioned civic nationalism. She's not talking about the country. She's talking about the white race in the country. That was why yeah, she appealed I to the founding. Then why did you read? Yeah, then why did you redefine yeah, it and say she wants? The then why did you redefine it and say she wants what's best for the country when that's not true? What she wants is what's best for the white race in the country. AJF, no, uh, what she yeah, what she wants is that the major question. ethnic group, which is white people, be be protected from reproductive invasion. Yes, sure. that's what then I mean. Then say that. Do that don't say what you mean because you have a really hard time. Whenever I try to ascribe meaning to anybody, say exactly what you mean. Use the exact word that she is talking about favoring group interest, and that group is a race of people, not a country of people, well, not a collection of people, but people a race of people. Review my statement and see that you're divagating right now. But let's read some <laughs> super chat. Yeah, yeah, you know what, because then uh, I, I have an idea. I, I was going to read these at the end, but now that we're sort of in between, I could pound through because there's a bunch of questions here. Um, and also, uh, th uh, people are fucking at replying me nonstop. Uh, the alt hype wants to hop in. Uh, uh, is everyone cool with that? I want to make sure that everyone, because we agreed with JF versus Destiny. D Destiny, And I want to be fair I, with you. I guess if he wants to. I don't know what the point is, but sure. Okay, uh, yeah, so uh, alt hype, like, by the way, you have to follow me. Your DMs aren't open. So, anyone who wants to be on the show, you have to follow me so I can follow you back and then we could fucking uh, do this. All right. Um, 
Yeah, so holy shit, right? This is fucking intense, more intense than I thought it'd be. Let's just pound through a couple of these and alt hype, follow me if you want to be on for a second. Uh, Dick Fingers, five bucks. Uh, if I were coming at this from a compassionate point of view, we'd find the phenotype for autism to help your argument better. Oof. Wild Warlock, five bucks. Love what does that w. even mean? <laughs> They're just being dicks, dude. There's a few coming, man. I, I was reading through. No, I'm like, just, the irony of commenting on somebody's intelligence without being able to throw together a statement that you literally pay dollars to have displayed on the fucking stream is hilarious. I'm sorry. I, have, I just wanted to no, reflect on that for a moment. Sorry. Go, continue. I, I ha- I have people call me a fag for five bucks. Yeah, okay, sure. So. In case people don't know, like <laughs> autism is not a reflection of your intelligence either. If you're a high functioning autistic person, it's not really a state. It's not a learning disability or a statement on your intelligence either. I don't know if most of the people in your chat would even know it, but I'm sorry. Carry on. No worries. I, I know everyone in the chat, by the way, everyone in the chat. Jesus Christ. Everyone just, whew, just take a breath. Okay. Jesus Christ. I'm super calm right people, now. People are mad at absolutely. <laughs> no, no. I mean, in the chat room, everyone's mad at everyone right now. Uh, the moment someone opens their mouth, everyone's like, "Shut the fuck up, faggot!" <laughs> like, "Yo, guys, we're this is this is interesting. This is cool. Let's talk this. Let's talk, right?" Wild Warlock, five dollars. Love, love what you've done with your channel, Andy. Stopped watching for a bit, but came back after seeing your apology to Rage and your aim for free speech. Thank you, uh, Crimson Satter. And then I'll I'll add uh, alt hype onto this. Um, the Crimson Satter, five bucks. Normative claim, descriptive claim. Can Destiny talk like a normal human being? Destiny, calm down. Don't worry, you don't have to answer that. Mike, what did he mean? Um, no, I'm just fine. <laughs> Mike M, 12 bucks. I respect Destiny for debating someone who actually studied this. Is Destiny Jewish and does he know why Jews are so interested in debunking race realism? Well, because we're trying to destroy the white race by spreading multiculturalism to you guys while we simultaneously reject it in places like Israel. I saw all the mouthy Buddha videos. Don't worry, I know all the Nazi arguments. Yeah, uh, Hast's Awakening, 10 New Zealand dollars. Nigerians are objectively just as intelligent as the Japanese. The discrepancies we find in current day IQ differences stem from a funky environment that has made Nigerians' brains extremely small. I don't know if that's not true, dude. That's not fucking true. What are you talking about? Look, look, I love well, does JF think donation. it's true? Ask JF if he thinks it's true. I'm curious. JF? If what is true? Sorry, I'm just Okay. Back. Yeah, no worries. Let me repeat that. Nigerians are objectively just as intelligent as the Japanese. The discrepancies we find in the current day IQ differences stem from a funky environment that has made Nigerians' brains extremely small. Well, that's actually an, an hypothesis that is ridiculously based on, on an hypothetical explanation of the source, but actually in the sentence, he recognizes the difference. So I would say his sentence is self-contradictory and wrong. All right, Kid Gamer, two uh, Libras. Can your viewers help me to 1K love your streams? Everyone hit like if you're enjoying this talk. Uh, Nakuero, five euros. Es aporto o genocidio de Reshef. He's saying, he's saying Portu- in Portuguese, uh, he supports the genocide of the French race. Uh, love the Warski oh, bros. Love, love, love the uh, Warski brothers and JF's content. Abraços de Portugal. He's saying uh, hugs from Portugal. Uh, Leo Riderstorm, five New Zealands. Race is real. Gender is real. That doesn't mean that anyone should be discriminated against basically solely on the race or gender ever. I love you, Andy. Thank you very much. Wayne McLaughlin, five bucks. Andy, can you get JF to swear at me in French? I like the way the French in Quebec swear in French. Merci. We swear to him in French a little bit. Okay. Uh, I mean, I'm not good at this. Okay. Chris, dusty tabarnak, d'imbécile de con, espèce de connard, va te faire enculer pour imbécile. Fuck, we're demonetized now. All right, guys, thanks. Uh, uh, Gabriel Lopez, I'll, I'll read just two more and then we'll move on. Gabriel Lopez, 20R. Hey, JF, race genetics define average dick sizes between race. Also, other physical traits such as height. Wouldn't IQ just be one of the differences? Maybe this whole controversy is due to IQ being harder to detect in real life. What do you think? Well, yeah, IQ is just one of the differences. That is true. Uh, it's actually one of the hundreds of differences between races. All right. Uh, Dick Fingers, five bucks. Are you seriously getting a video to debate for you? My dude, fuck out of here. We got Tara on, so obviously 
that doesn't make any sense anymore. But thank you for donating. Appreciate that. Just one more. A nerve honor. Five bucks. I humbly call for the Anglo-Saxon supremacy in the UK and Ireland. Fuck all tags. T-A-I-G-S. What's that? Is that like another word for for black people or something? That's a anyway, racial that's slur, dude. You're getting your whole channel is uh, getting demonetized now. Uh, yeah. No, dude, I, if that would happen, it'd be demonetized on my first video I ever uploaded. It was just a video called "nigger." No, I'm just joking. Okay, uh, uh, so let's let's fucking uh, move on from here. I'll look if alternative. Have, is there anyone who wants to um, like? A Destiny JF or Geek, you want to reflect on anything that you've talked about while I get alternative hypotheses in here? Well, I mean, like, there's still like 50 things I've written down that I didn't get to respond to from <laughs> JF, so I mean. Oh, shit. Okay, okay. Um, uh, you know, um, anything you want to just throw out there while I'm looking for him? Uh, Jesus Christ. Um, hold on. Let me back up between all this terrorist stuff. I guess we're dumping all of this out. Um, white people and Jews. Alt hype. I don't even. What do you remember? We were talking about before. I've got violent ethno state. White man has improved Africa. Um, these are what I have right now <laughs> written down. I don't remember what, what specifically what we were talking the about. The first question, which you've been dodging twice. I haven't dodged I any question. The third time. Hey, real fast. JF. JF. JF wants to know who you like to fuck and why. JF, do you mind if you alternative height? I yeah, I'm gonna put slow mo on the chat next time. I don't know how to do it from here. I'll I'll. I'll see if I could do it because this is way too much. But uh, you know, do me a favor, JF. May you f uh, uh, follow the alt uh, height or yeah, yeah. send. I've already sent him. Yeah, yeah he doesn't want I've me. I've sent him the link. All right, cool. So, yeah. Fix the fucking title, Destiny. Someone said it on DMs. Yeah, uh, I said JF versus Destiny. Uh, Tara joins. And then I'll I'll keep changing it. Don't worry. That's not the final title. All right, that's just I I evolve it because the show just keeps fucking changing, like on a whim. So, uh, yeah. So destiny out of everything okay. you've written. Yeah. You've so written we can go it. back to that one question that I never got to answer. Um, so I think the question was, um, is it okay to have racial preferences in who you date? That was the question, JF. Essentially, right? Yep. So D not just date, but fuck. Well, sure, date and fuck. Yeah. Yes. So um, <clears throat> isn't that why we date though? Well, according to JF, it is, yeah. right? Everything we do is for baby making. Um, the, so this is a really complicated question that, that I think requires a little bit of unpacking. On the surface... Oh, oh, oh wait, what? wait, wait. I, I know why people are saying change the fucking title. I spelt your name wrong, Destiny. That's okay, dude. It's a pretty complicated. Uh, shit, There's no, like six or not. seven letters in there. It's all oh, right, dude. That's absolute retardation. Fucking... Oh, my God. I stink. Oh, okay, go ahead. Okay, so I think it's important to do some sort of introspection to find out why you favor any certain group of people over another. On its surface, I don't think there's any problem with having preferences for certain groups of people. Um, you might find that black people or Chinese people or brunettes or blondes are just not attractive to you. If it's really that simple, then I don't think there's anything necessarily wrong with that. Um, I do think you need to be careful, to, to, and again, this can only be discovered via introspection, to make sure that your preferences aren't based in something that might be a little bit more nefarious than like a simple uh, like a, a physical attraction. Um, so for instance, let's say that when I was a child I had a really bad experience with two blonde women. Um, say that say they, they, uh, they were my babysitters and they slapped me or whatever and I, when I didn't want to go to sleep or something dumb like that, right? So I have a, I, have a, 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 um, I get triggered whenever I see somebody blonde, right? That for me to grow up in life thinking that I don't ever want to date a blonde because I think all blondes are disgusting is probably not a good uh, way to view it. That, that That's probably worth a, a bit of introspection and then maybe you realize, okay, well, I've had a bad experience with some blondes. I could probably date any blonde. I just haven't wait, met wait, one. Wait, right? but Destiny, mm -hmm. how, about, how about just like uh, inherent attraction? Like I'm not, not based sure. on... Yeah, I don't, I, I don't it, know... It, it's really hard to talk about an inherent attraction because we are the context through which we exist is culture. I, like I can't possibly answer. Nobody can tell you what they're inherently attracted to. That's an impossible question to answer unless you literally get a child like raised in a forest. But even even that is going to be an environment that will um, influence the expression of whatever genetic attraction they have. Right. Mm. So that's a but really. Do you hard think it's a, a problem? Like, like I don't really think it's mm -hmm. a problem. Like for example. 
um, say like a certain personality type uh, keeps fucking you over when you're in a relationship sure. with them. So you sort of like, all right, I've I have complete like I just have a really bad experience. Therefore, it it triggers my brain to dislike or be unattracted to this type of person. Sure. That's so like fine, a personality right? type, I think, is a decent value to judge somebody by which you would date or not date them. So like I, for instance, I couldn't date somebody if I consider them to be very stupid or if I consider them to be very um, I don't know whiny or something. I'm sure I could find traits where I would say like that's okay. Um, but black people or Asian people or white people could possess any one of these traits. So I wouldn't have the preference of, of any specific race of people to date because that wouldn't be as relevant, I guess. Uh, do you think it's it's racist if someone says that they, they don't want to bang a black chick? I just, it's a weird statement to me because there are so many different types of black chicks that that's I'd, really... I'd, I'd smash a black chick, by the way, just for anyone sure. who's curious. Yeah, that, that's, would... like, typically when I hear, so this gets anecdotal, which I don't like to dig into and you can take issue with this, but, like, um, the, typically when somebody says something like, I would never date a black chick or I would never fuck a black chick, usually this is based on a bunch, or I'm sorry, this is based upon a whole bunch of assumptions that you make about black chicks and you've never actually met one or dated one before, you know? If you're somebody that's had, like, a plethora of dating experience with, like, black people, People or with Asian people or with white people, you're like, you know, fuck that, I'm not going to do that shit anymore. Then your opinion is probably like a little bit more substantiated. But if you're like 19, 20, 21, and you've never like really sexually or romantically interacted with one of these people before, it's kind of a strange statement to make because it's like, how could you possibly know that you would never date somebody like that if you've never tried or never talked to them or explored more than just like watching it's, TV or something? It's would a, you feel the same weirdness if I was to come and say I wouldn't date a transsexual chick? Um, I would say the same type of introspection is probably required. Yeah, sure. Um, that it's possible that... Are you serious? Yeah, sure. So, like, I might make you the statement... that people who don't like fucking transsexuals should introspect? So, this is what I was going to say. Are we good? Okay. So, let's say, for instance, you really like fucking vaginas. Like, that's, like, a really big thing for you sexually, right? Um, you probably couldn't date a trans woman because you would be sexually incompatible. And I think sexual incompatibility is a good enough reason not to be in a relationship with somebody. I think that's a totally valid thing to say. Yeah. Well, I mean, <clears throat> I would say most people who are straight and like women... Mm -hmm probably aren't down for sucking dicks i'm not like bashing anyone who sucks a dick if you're gonna suck a trans dick like fucking all the power to you like uh, uh, for some people that's christmas for them you know what i sure, mean sure no like, i understand oh, i'm just saying that there's like there's like a there, there's just there's a way of addressing this that is I don't want to use the libcuck words, but in a way that's compassionate and sensitive to everybody involved. So, for instance, if somebody were asking me, would you ever date Andy? I'm not going to be like, oh, fucking gross. Fucking Andy? Oh, God. Fuck no, right? Because he's that a fucking, a lot, like, that, that'd be like, that you know, I would say, I would say, like, well, no, you know, I'm not a big fan of getting fucked in the ass. I'm not a big fan of sucking dicks. I don't think we would be very sexually compatible, so I don't see myself pursuing a relationship with somebody like that. What? The Andy could just be the receiver. You, you I don't. Know, I don't right? even like giving it all that much. I'm sorry. My dick is just so huge. I have a problem getting it into those kinds. Of <laughs> oh. No, but like, like in general, right? That, that I, I could, I could, I could argue this from a position of sexual incompatibility that like Andy couldn't really take offense to, right? Now, if somebody says, "Would you date this person who's a trans person?" I would approach it in a similar way, right? Like, well, I actually really, prefer, I really like vaginal sex. I like um, penis and vagina, PIV intercourse. This is something that is very um, entertaining to me. It's something that I would pursue in a relationship. So my, it would be, I would be incompatible with this person on a sexual level but there's a difference between saying something like that versus like ew tranny oh disgusting fuck no i'd never go near a tranny oh right that these are two like fundamentally different statements right because you're coming at them from totally different approaches well well yeah there's a difference obviously between being like nah i'm not really interested in black chicks and i hate black people therefore i'm not interested in black Chicks. Well, yeah, like, I'm just saying there's a, a difference. difference. Like, so th yeah. there's an implied, and and I know that this is going to trigger JF because he doesn't believe in any type of implication that's not explicit, or whatever, right? But when you say something, when you say I would never date a black person, there is subtext there, and the and what you're essentially I'm triggered. I know what you're essentially saying is <laughs> I would never date. Yeah, yeah I, you are essentially saying I would never date a black person because I believe that all black people possess some number of qualities that I don't ever want to be associated with, right? And it's and it's when you ask the person, well, what is that? What are those qualities that you're talking about? You know, and if they start rattling things off, well, then you can get to, this is why I say introspection is important. Like if they say like, well, black people tend to be loud in restaurants or black people tend to be really dumb. It's like, okay, well, what if I took to you like a, like a black chick that goes to Stanford or something and she's, you know, really well-spoken, really well-mannered, you know, really well-presented in public. Would you date somebody like this? If the question is still no, then you have to let you dig deeper, right? That, that's, that's all I'm saying. 
things. When somebody says I would never date X person, usually the, the subtext there is that X group of people possess some qualities that you believe is intrinsic to that group of people that make them non-dateable. But but but, but let's be honest, uh, mm -hmm. Destiny here. Like I. I feel as you know, you know, you're, you know, like you're a thinker. You research on the, all this stuff. But let's say, like, just the average person who's not a YouTuber or yeah. someone who researches. Like, I'd say most people don't see a black person and then not want to date them and think like all these point form things. You know, it's just of more of like a, you know, I'm not interested in that. But mm -hmm. oh, look at her. You know what I mean? I, I, I think because a lot of people of of us who talk about things like this and go deeper and and um, analyze everything. Uh, like deeper than than most people, uh, we would think things like that. Like what you're thinking that people are going so deep into it where it's like, oh, I'm not going to date a black person because X, Y, and Z. Uh, I think most people just have the inherent, oh, it's a blonde chick with big tits. Boom, I want to smash that. Or, you know what I mean? I think... That you're, yeah, but all my argument is deeply, oh no no sure I mean? sure but this is my argument this is why I say with some introspection I think introspection is really important I don't think a lot of people do a lot of it um, but but I think there's a value there that if more people engaged in it that, that you could extract a, a very real tangible value um, something that I use a lot as an example is like the word faggot right when people say faggot a lot as an insult I used to say it all the time I try not to anymore but when people say faggot as an insult a lot of people don't think like deeply about this like oh like when I say faggot I'm actually um, reinforcing power structures that uh, you know just discourage uh, homosexual people from integrating it. Like, nobody usually goes through this thought process. They just say it because they know it's a word that they can say that makes people feel bad or whatever, mm -hmm. or because they use it as an insult. But with a little bit more introspection, maybe you get to a point where you're like, hey, you know, when I say faggot, I've got a friend that says that word too, and he actually hates gay people. I wonder if he thinks when I say faggot that I actually hate gay people. And then by extension yeah, of that, I yeah, wonder but, if there are uh, gay people. Like, and I know that most people don't go through these thoughts, but if more people... yeah. <laughs> Who's like, who's like, uh, I'm not attracted to an Asian person. My buddy hates dating Asian and I know, I know he hates Asian people. Therefore, now I should date her to not be as racist as he is. No, I would but never, I, no, 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 I never would go that far. You should never pick like dating preferences to prove you're not racist or something. I would never say that. I think you're deep, uh, thinking so deep into this about like, cause I don't think it's racist at all to, you know, have a preference of No, no, I'm not saying that the preference right? itself is racist. I'm saying that a preference okay. could be rooted in racism. Be. That's why yeah, introspection I mean, is important, right? I'm, That's I'm all I'm sure saying. There's a, I'm sure there's someone out there who's like, oh, fucking Asian people. Like, mm -hmm. and then because like, like, all I'm saying I is like, I could guarantee you that I could get a room full of people that are like, I would never date a fucking black chick ever. But if you were to put them in a room with like Beyonce or some shit and they were to go out for like dinner or something, by the end of the night, they'd be like, oh, you know, I never really thought about this. But yeah, she's actually really chill, like really cool. Or like you find like a black chick that looks nice and plays video games and is pretty intelligent. Like, oh, you know, actually, yeah, she's actually super cool. But it's just that depending on where you grew up as a white person in the US, you might have like never fucking seen a black person or you've seen them like two or three of them, you know? Um, all, all I'm saying is that like the introspection is important there. And then you can find out why you have a certain preference to decide whether or not the preference is good or not. Hey, hey, do you like, you know how people sometimes hate fuck someone? Do you think they're like like our racist people who hate fuck? Stop people? talking about my Saturday nights. <laughs> God damn it. It's you private. We have private conversations on our doxing Discord. I mean, our regular Discord. Jeez, uh, okay. Well, that's interesting. Uh, JF, uh, people in the chat are saying, JF, speak. Any thoughts on everything that's been... Uh, yeah, well, I was saying we've been spending the last 15 minutes turning around the pot to finally... In the end, Destiny agrees that you can do whatever you want in terms of sexual choice. So that was the the answer I was interested well, in. No, that wasn't the answer you're looking for. You were asking for a moral judgment on it. You weren't asking if you can do something. There's no point in asking yeah. that question, right? Okay. Okay. Well, in the end, he does not morally judge anyone who would say, uh, I don't bang a black woman or I bang only Asian woman. That would be fine to him. He just encourages that person to introspect. Well, personally, I don't encourage the introspection, but that's a difference we have, me and Destiny. He believes in uh, laid out moral principles, guiding actions. I believe in free choice, and I recognize that people don't necessarily have access, just like Andy stated, people don't necessarily have access to the the structure of their choice and the reason what? why they make choices. I like how you imply that free yeah. choice is incompatible with my introspection. That was cute, the way you set up that dichotomy, but okay. Well, I mean, free choice in the sense that what, as an observer of a choice, no, you're right. I do not mean that it's uh, incompatible, but as an observer of free choice in society, all I care about is what people output in terms of what they decide to do. And I don't care about asking them, well, why do you do this? Because I know that the 
the explanation that they might provide they actually don't even know why but introspection could change the output brain deciding for them but introspection could change the output by inquiring them or, or, or by forcing introspection you can modify the output so if you're concerned with the output how can you untie it from the introspection well you can untie it just like you can untie it for any other irrelevant thing it's like saying well um let's say what you ate yesterday might change your choice today yes but okay. if you don't have access if you don't have conscious access to that process then how would you ever know that this is the cause that changed uh, your choice today you well, won't know and that's why i don't ask people to introspect i don't really care about whether they have access to the reason why they like certain races or not most of it to me is just a bunch of neurons in their brain you're, making the decision you're defeated by your own example though like introspection could provide a value there say you have a worker that shows up and his performance his tangible actual performance is bad and and it's really bad until lunch and and it happens every single day for two weeks the worker comes in as his output for his labor is, is subpar until he's had lunch and then afterwards you find out it's good maybe as a manager uh, this is a pretty ridiculous example but maybe as like a supervisor you observe this behavior and you go hey dude when you come into work like when was the last time you ate and their answer is always well i wake up really late so i don't have time to eat i guess it was like supper or, or dinner last night and then you go oh well hey maybe you should have like a snack or something before coming into work and it'll make you feel a little bit better well in that case now after a little bit of introspection guided by another person you know the person can go okay well yeah i'm, I'm going to eat before coming into work and that's actually actually going to change or modify my output, that thing that you said you were singularly concerned with. Oh yeah, I don't deny that sometimes introspection can reveal for people who have access to the facts that can influence their behavior. It's all good. Introspection can be used. In the case of sexual preferences, I think people experience the drive even before talking about it or thinking about it. I mean, you'll have people reporting that someone is beautiful or not just based on a picture. And so th that's why I think people don't necessarily have access to why they would love that facial feature and not that other facial features. That's why I don't care. But let's move on. I well, mean, yeah, well, well, I don't, I, I don't I want to keep moving there. on because I don't, I don't even agree with that. You think that I don't think anything we've we've spoken about is, is necessarily ultra high level philosophical thought. I think you could ask any person a basic question of why do you find black people or why do you find Asian people attractive or unattractive? I think most people are capable of that really basic level of introspection. Oh, hmm. oh yeah, they are capable of providing an answer. I'm saying they don't have access to their to the actual mechanism that makes them love something or not love something. So I'm saying you're just you're just gonna listen to their bullshit. I mean, from a psychologist's perspective, that's how I was doing cognitive experiment with the assumption that people do not necessarily know why they love things. But that's a that's a like very broad psycho cognitive psychology question. Sure, but it's, it's but this question related to race. Sure, but this isn't a binary yes or no answer, right? It's possible that they're aware of some mechanisms that influence their decision while simultaneously being unaware of other mechanisms that influence their decision. And it might be uh, enough just to bring some of the things they're aware of to the forefront of their conscious to analyze to, to get an, a difference in the in the output there. No, but but, but I ask you one thing, Destiny. Let, let, Mm -hmm. Let's say someone's, let's say, not attracted to a black person. Hold on, wait, right? hold on, hold on, hold on, real quick. Someone in your chat said, Destiny, example of being a manager, Poopsie has never been a manager of administrative employees. Stick to video games. And I don't know what he means by administrative employees, but I was a supervisor in a casino restaurant for front and back of the house for three years. That dude can go fuck himself. Sorry, go uh, ahead. We do, yeah, care, no. we do care about your CV, I know. Steven. Yep, go ahead. <laughs> I was just, uh, I was going to ask, okay. So I see what you're saying. I, I sort of understand that there's like a deeper thought process that might be a little bit racist when someone's not attracted to, let's say, a black person. However, if the person isn't, you know, going around saying fuck black people or whatever mm -hmm. or or being racist to black people, it's just that's one of one of the things in their brain that they're just not attracted to black people. Is that a problem? Yes. And this is one of the great dividers between like the skeptic community and, and I guess like people like me or maybe more hardcore right. left. Can we just say yeah. fuck the skeptic sure. community? Like, so the, community, the problem like is that the, the problem is that we've reached a state today where like racism or sexism doesn't manifest itself in society in traditional means. You don't see people saying women can't vote or you don't see people saying black people aren't allowed to get jobs with white people, right? It, the, the, the forms that it takes is usually much more um, subtle. And so the only way to tease out these 
really subtle forms of racism is with some level of introspection. So, for instance, you posed to me the question, if somebody doesn't want to date black people, is it really that big of a deal? Well, in this particular circumstance, maybe not. But what if what if they say something like, I don't really like to date black people just because, I don't know, I think most of them are kind of lazy and I just, I don't know, I just don't really like them that much, right? Let's say that's their opinion. They don't date black people. Okay, sure, we'll say that's fine. Let's say that this person is now a manager or a recruiter for a company and now they have to make a judgment on what kind of employees to hire. Now, they're not outwardly racist. They would never say, you know, fuck black people. I hate Obama because he's black. But now they're in charge of looking at resumes for a job and they have two resumes to pick from. One is Michael Smith and one is like Jamal Johnson or something and he looks at him and they're pretty equal but he's got this thought where he's like ah, you know I think Michael is probably just the better candidate Jamal is probably kind of lazy you know I just kind of have this feeling right so, so you're saying the, the attraction and by the way everyone is screaming all type we sent them the link he's free to welcome whenever you want so if anyone knows him there. it's Ryan Hello. Oh, here. Here. oh shit! Oh shit! Shit! My bad. I didn't see you. That's why everyone's saying your name. But yeah, just, just to finish that off real quick was um, like, yeah, I see what you're saying that they're taking their attraction and maybe bringing it into like the workplace. Or not or just the attraction, else. but just these underlying assumptions we have that if we never really stop and question them, that they can manifest in a whole bunch of like tangibly negative ways. That, see, again, yeah. I, I, I believe that you're you're thinking way too deeply into this to someone who just doesn't want to fuck a certain. Like race. Well, yeah, know? no, I'm just saying that in that in this one example of like who you saying, fuck, though. it's not a big saying. deal, but it could, but that could manifest in a lot of negative ways throughout the rest of your life, right? Yeah, I, yeah. I see what you're saying. Oh, uh, hey, Ryan, uh, Alt Hype, nice to meet you, my friend. Hey, nice to meet you. Yeah, yeah I've heard a lot about you the past week, and I've never talked to you before, so I, I have no idea what your positions are or anything. I haven't seen any of your stuff, so if you want to um, introduce yourself first to everyone. Uh, yeah, I'm just an autodidact on the internet who likes to uh, spread the glory of racism. Um, one thing I want to say to Stephen here. <laughs> the hell of a uh, business card. <laughs> <laughs> well, wait, is that is that legal in Canada at this point? Yeah. We're still, we need to cut the stream. <laughs> no, no, did Jordan right. Peterson make a video about it? Are we going to get locked up for it? Right. <laughs> yeah, one thing. One thing I would say, though, is that just uh, regarding the hiring stuff, in practice... Um, I, I don't care remote. to talk about this. I know you've got a million reasons why all of it is true that you, you shouldn't hire black people. the guess uh, where uh, they talk uh, about yeah, the Tell us why black people are so lazy. Class go ahead, dude. Yeah, go. Come on, Destiny. Hey, Destiny, you had a lot of time to talk. Uh, yeah, go for it. Yeah. It's open okay. house. It's open house. Well, I, I would just say the thing is like, I'm, just, I'm just sort of here on the spot, but um, uh, there's not like, like the hiring discrimination against uh, blacks and Hispanics is actually something um, that firms are actually responding to an over-credentialization of these of people based on affirmative action. Um, and I've actually done some research on this and actually found that when you control for a criminal record, um, that there's actually, uh, that, there, that they actually uh, uh, go go away in terms of these uh, hiring discrimination stuff. So um, we could talk about that some other time, though. I mean, that, that goes against your argument, though. What? Right, the idea that if you control for criminal background, now if they're told the black people aren't criminals, they'll hire them. That, that shows that without well, being given access to a criminal background, they would assume the black people are more likely to be criminals. Yes. Okay, so, yes, which is evidence of, of racial discrimination when sorting through resumes. Well, okay, but they are more likely to have criminal background. Okay. So what's the biggest contention that you two have with each other? I think that Ryan hates fucking brownies, dude. <laughs> that's, my, that's my point. Oh, so... His, nor his normative claims, I'm sorry, are my issues with uh, Ryan. Are the normative? Uh, do you want to answer that? Um, I, don't, I don't know how to answer that. I mean, like... Uh, I mean, like, if you have it, Like, there's people who talk about how bad communism is and how communism will sort of destroy a country but the thing is if you have a country that's where you're dominated by a bunch of foreign people um that's something that's a lot more permanent than something like communism or something like some sort of religious cult taking over a country you can sort of come back from that but if your country is dominated by a bunch of other people then you know you're not you, you, there's no way you're going to come back from that and it's also something that I see in something that that Stephen does and something that I see in a lot of other people do is that they just sort of assume that like, you know, j just sort of just they, they don't look at things in terms of of, for example, when you bring a bunch of Arabs into another place or a bunch of Africans into another place, you're not 
uh, it's not like, oh, let's just share the whole world with these people. The thing is they have their space of dominance. You know, blacks have Africa, Arabs have the Arab world, Chinese have China, right? Even Latin Americans have their spaces of dominance. And what all this does is what you're actually doing is you're actually reducing areas of white dominance on the planet, right? And so you can say, oh, I'm against white power. Sure, but there's all sorts of spaces for power of other groups. They have their zone of monopoly. And so whenever you talk about having the multiracial society, it only goes one way, right? Now you can say in theory, sort of on the spot, well, I'm for the whole world to become like a, a big giant melting pot. And you'll say that in theory, but in practice, it all just goes one way. So I don't see this at, at this whole multiracial program as being benign or as being, you know, fair in any way. It's, it's, it is in practice, whether you intend it or not, it is in practice just all directed at one of people. May I ask you something? Actually, uh, I've been very interested in asking someone from the alt right this. Um, so I, I understand your guys' point of view of you know you want like a white ethno state. Am I right? Am I correct in that position that you have? Yeah, something like uh, the demographics of Denmark. Sure. Okay. So so do you don't you think that you, you guys have that it's like a pipe dream? Like how, how would how would anything like that even begin? Well, there's a few ways you could do it. One is you could just uh, take over an already existing white country. And by take over, you don't have to like, I don't mean like some sort of military coup. I just mean convince the, the population that, hey, this is this is a space for our people. You know? and, mm -hmm. and the thing is you have countries that are already demographically close enough. And all you have to do is convince the, the whites there to keep it that way. So that's one way to do it. Another way to do it, this is more of a pipe dream, you could say, but you know, lots of, but hey, countries break up, you know, there's secession in, in countries. One way you could do it out of the United States is you have a bunch of states break off from the US, the US breaks apart. Um, and then you, ha you take it, you have an area that's already say 80% white, and then you pay a bunch of uh, other uh, non-whites to leave. You just say, hey, we'll pay so you, you guys, so, so you guys be down for a state of just alt-righters? Just like white ethno state all writers, not like all. I know Absolutely. all. I, I know all. All all writers aren't white ethno state supporters. However, right. let's say the white ethno state. You guys be down for, for like Minnesota. It's like all right, yo, we got Minnesota. Sure. Cool. Sure. Oh, uh, <laughs> ideally, we'd want something more like Oregon because it's the ocean. We don't want to be landlocked by other <laughs> other places or Maine. You know, I'm sure people in Maine would love to. Yeah, Oregon like seems like a tough sell. <laughs> <laughs> Man. You're gonna have lots, this... much more left this to kick out. Jesus, honestly, like this is, like your guys' viewpoint is just so outrageous to me. Yeah, this it's is just... pretty much the same as like debating. This is why I don't debate like communists or socialists on my but channel. I, I think it's I really boring because it's never say, because not, this is not, never going to happen. It's never going to happen. There's no well, path never, to which this is possible. This was this was the norm. Well, this was the norm for white people thinking all the way up until you know the end of World War II. So oh never shit! I but, forgot but about no the part longer. where you had a time machine and you can send us back a hundred years. My bad, dude. Like, what kind of what kind of answer is that? Like, yeah, it might have been the norm for a long time, but we're way past that. Do you think we're going to regress back to that, or we're going to go back to that form of thinking? Like, by which path does this happen? Well, you're looking at it like it's some sort of ideology that needs to be resurrected. It's not. It's just normal thinking, right? Imagine if you had little kids in school, say, you know, randomly saying objectivist things or randomly saying communist things. That's not what that's not what happens at all. But they do randomly say racist things, quote unquote, despite having no prompting and despite being conditioned heavily against it. Right? It's not like a normal ideology that you can just defeat. Okay, there's right? a far just, stretch from like kids normal. saying like, "Hey, like that guy is black," versus we no, need no, no, our own separatist the, country. I know, I know, but the point the point of that is that you're treating this like it's some sort of ideology that is heavily suppressed. And yes, if communism was as you know was as put down as white identity, then yes, you would have a point. But this is not like communism at all. This is something much more ubiquitous and something that is much more that something that will come back as soon as the suppressing mechanisms of it go away. That's that's my view. Gotcha. That's why it's that not sounds coming. interesting, but I don't see it ever happening. But I guess we'll find out. I don't know. Well, it's well, the separation of the state doesn't seem so Poland, impossible. So. 
Separation of a state from a federal government seems like a realist thing. I'm a Quebecois, so maybe I'm, I'm biased in the fact that we've been ta thinking about separating and we've had a, a referendum for 49.4% yes. So it seems like a separation by referendum is a realistic goal to reach for a state. Do you think Quebec's location in Canada is comparable to any other single state's place in the United States? Well, it's not comparable exactly. because of the French so, culture, but it, you can you can easily imagine future political events driving a much stronger force in the U.S. than it did on Quebec. Pro probably not. In the United States, most of our ideological differences come between cities and rural areas. So you would have to find some way to divorce the rural areas from the cities, which I don't see. You would have to redraw state lines or something. It would be really crazy to do that. My response well, to this well, is you, you do, need you to do, think in the fourth dimension, stuff. Marty. You do it in two steps, right? One thing, you can have a Republican-Democrat split, and then within those two new countries, you have further splits. So, so how do you make... Path. I just don't see the political path forward to making these new countries. Well, yeah. some, well right Me now, either. you have about 30% 30, 30 of people in California literally want their state to break off from the U.S., so... Like, yeah. want, like, I vote for it on a poll, or, like, I'm ready to go get a rifle and fight for my <laughs> secession from the U.S. Why would like, you have to fight for a rifle? Why, why, I don't know why people bring this up all the time, and that's not what happened in the Soviet Union. But it is what happened in the United States Civil War. How are you going to get part of California sure, sure, breaking sure, off sure, from the U.S. Sure. And, and no one having any yeah, problems with it? That, that's, like, you could say, oh, the U.S. is going to intervene because that's what they did in 1865. But you could have made the same argument that the Soviet Union is going to prevent secession because they prevented it. In, in Hungary and in Czechoslovakia and in East Germany in the 40s and 50s. So your Much argument is unironically that 30% of Californians could break off and everybody would be okay with it, that there wouldn't no, no, be no, no, some no, sort no. of military no, struggle to prevent it? It's 30% right now. It's 30% right now. Okay. Right? It's, so it's only 20% away from 50%. Gotcha. That's what I'm saying. And then when it hit, once it hits that 50%, then you think by some process, California is going to break off? Things... Yeah, things start happening. Okay, right? I mean, right. you get a, you get a president like Trump who says good riddance. Gotcha. Because you know? the thing is, think about the Republicans. The Republicans would be more than happy to have it, have them break off, and then California breaks off, and then you have a bunch of other blue states who go, well, now we have no power because we don't have California's electoral votes. We're going to break off. Right? That's, I mean, mm -hmm. kind of a pipe dream, but that's sort of a plausible. Path. I agree I, with I that. Can see that. <laughs> it is a pipe dream, but okay. Yeah, that's uh, insane. And 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 by the way, we'll uh, we'll get. You know, Destiny and and JF do I guess soon the the finale of the race real, a realism thing, and then we'll wrap it up. But uh, so um, alt hype, do you do you have anything else that you want to challenge uh, Destiny on? And then we'll get as people are saying, we should get back to that debate. But um, uh, well, I, don't, I just got back from a Christmas party, so uh, I, I'm sort of just thrown right in here out of nowhere. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, no worries. I don't know. Have you, have you been I, drinking? I one thing, at all? Um, maybe, uh, maybe or maybe not. I don't just know. a little bit. Uh, just maybe a little bit. But I'll say, I'll say one. Can anyone one commit thing. to anything in this debate? Goddamn. <laughs> I'll say one last thing. <laughs> commit to any position you want me to. I love committing to positions, dude. I'll say one last thing. Sure. Uh, you know Scott Adams, the yeah, writer I know of that dude uh, is the insane. Yeah. Okay. Yes. One thing he said. He says that I think is really interesting is he says that goals are for losers and not that you know you shouldn't work hard or whatever but but fixating on doing a, a single thing like I'm going to do this with my YouTube channel or I'm going to do this like don't do that like the world is much more random and so what you should be doing is developing sort of skills and just playing and basically just playing things by ear and you'll do a lot better than than searching for a single goal because you don't know what's going to fall into your lap Right. And so I look at the political movements that same way. So when people ask me, oh, how exactly is this going to pan out? My my view is more of like, you know, sort of sort of just do a bunch of stuff and see what happens. Kind of like, you know, John Kasich in the Republican primaries. You know, why was he hanging in there? You didn't know. Maybe something would happen. Maybe he would be able to bargain at the at the at the convention or something. As it turns out, Kasich did, wasn't able to do anything with his with his run. But but the thing is, while he was in there. You know, who knows what would have happened? He, maybe he could have done something with this campaign. And that's sort of how I see what I'm doing. Like, I, like you're asking me, like, what particularly, how particularly is, go, is this going to manifest? I don't know, but let's, you know, build some sort of po political action. I see. You know, so you're just like throwing it out into the universe. And, 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 see, and, and see what happens. See, see the situation as it comes.
True. He's oh, basically he's talking question. about like baby steps, right? Like, so socialists will argue that like, well, if we get a lot of companies set up with co-ops or something, if we get more people, no. you know, in favor of social health care, that we can start making steps towards uh, like a reality Not where people can see. It could be that. It could be that. I'm just saying it could, I'm, it could be that. That's one of the True. things it could be. Uh, I wanted to actually ask this. I'm an idiot for not asking Tara McCarthy. This. I want to ask you this. is more of a, just a dumb question, but it's it's funny. If someone gave you $5 million right now to live in the Middle East for two years, would you do it? Yes. <laughs> All right, cool. $5 million? Bucks? Absolutely. <laughs> All right, cool. Fair enough. Fair enough. Not there forever. Yeah. <laughs> cool, man. All right. Well, thanks for swinging on by. And we'll, I guess we'll finish up with uh, JF versus uh, Destiny on the race realism stuff and maybe find an ending to it and then I could read uh, the super chats and if you guys want to get going after that while I'm reading them and just talking to the audience you could do that or you could stick around if you want uh, so yeah but thanks for swinging out a uh, 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 bye and maybe I'll speak to you in the future dude it's always an open yeah. house here if it's something that you want to talk about right so you can just uh, DM me whenever alright cool alright bud alright peace out all right, uh, fucking Jesus, all over the board today, but goddamn. Can I, I have a question for JF. Can I ask JF a question? I'm actually curious. This is gonna be, course, I don't really course, have man. the descriptive yep. side of things down. I wanted to actually spend like a month looking into this before I did any of these descriptive conversations, but I'm curious, okay? Um, in, okay, so when we talk about, when we talk about genetic clusters can you tell me what meaningful divisions do you see that you could make to 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 separate out races of people jf i'm curious like what would what, what, can you answer that or do you need more of a question <clears throat> no i mean i understand your question so okay. uh as it turns out uh the genetic clusters that a computer will first uh stick to it like a magnet to are the races uh that we define as like black african Middle Eastern, Asian, Inuits, and whites. Uh, that doesn't mean that these uh, that these clusters of genes are uniform. In fact, each of the people in these races do have some genes that that would be identified by the computer as belonging to the other races. So the way to understand uh, the clusters of genetic information is to know that it's like it's like colors ball of multiple colors in a in a a play playpen with kids playing uh, with the balls now if the colors are fully shuffled all the balls are far the color if you take if you pick one of the balls in some region of the playpen it's going to be randomly red blue yellow or green uh, however if the balls are a little bit sorted such that they are not perfectly sorted such that there's like a corner where there's only blue and a corner where there's only green but it's sorted a little bit so that when you pick in a certain region of the space you pick a ball it's going to be more likely to be blue or more likely to be red that's how genes are in humans not perfectly clustered but more than random Sure, I don't. I don't disagree with that. I guess what I'm asking is, do you see a meaningful enough division? What phenotype do you think can be expressed more in a, in a particular genetic cluster that makes it worth separating out this group of people as a different, say, subspecies? I think is the term that Ryan uses on his website. Do you think that those traits, those phenotypical traits, exist? Or oh yeah, well, when we divide the when we divide humanity into the classical races, white, Asian, black, we find a host, a, a full list of things that they differ on. It includes genetic expression, it includes hormonal levels, it includes aspect of facial features, skin color, brain development, brain sizes in various regions of the brain. It includes IQ, it includes measures of cognitive perfor performance that are close to IQ or related to IQ. It includes aspect of education, parenting, it includes a violent behavior, it includes criminality levels. And so, yes, definitely we have a lot of phenotypes to justify our division of, uh, between races. It seems that the division that we use, we, we first start with a division based on skin color. It seems that this division reveals all sorts of difference at all the levels that I've just listed. Hey, so, hey, wait, wait, hold on, wait, I, I, have to, I have to respond to this. So, like, if let's say that you had two groups of people, okay? Let's say that these were genetically the exact same um, 
fuck there's a word for it uh, but but let's say well g- genetic clones okay we had we had two people that okay. were genetic clones let's say we send them off to different islands um and then they each create their own civilization based off of their um similar or identical genetic material um let's say that after some generations um starting with the same genetic material let's say that one group um for whatever reason a bunch of schools exist here and these people get educated and then the other group these people don't have schools let's say that when you start to do measures of like iq cognitive performance and all of this that you find that the group of people with schools are much higher of um have gotten much higher attainment in education and score better on cognitive tests or g-loaded tests would you say that you should separate these two groups of people out as races at this point or well, you might if you have genetic evidence that you are justified in thinking that they have become different. You could. Okay, now, so... your hypothetical scenario mm-hmm. involving twins is not the reality of human evolution. The reality of human evolution is that people do not have the same genes. Sure. So can I ask you this? And I'm not trying to get you here. You can either tweet this at me or DM it to me or whatever later. Do you think that there exists right now that there is genetic evidence that concretely explains the variance in IQ or, or a good percentage of the variance and IQ between races of people, do you believe that that genetic evidence exists right now? Uh, you mean genetic evidence that would prove what? Exactly what point? You mean that the gap in IQ between blacks and white is of genetic origin? Yes. So the hey, real fast, uh, sorry, um, sorry, a geek fool has to go. So geek, uh, thanks for showing up, buddy. I'll talk to you later, man, okay? All right, man. Thanks a lot for I, the invite. I, I appreciate it for the support in this intense stream. All right, and thanks a lot. I had to hold your hand for this, okay, man? All right. So bye-bye, Geek. <laughs> Peace out, Geek. Uh, right. So Sorry. to answer the question, I'll type as a video that he published, I think today or yesterday, exactly about this question. So what do we know about what causes IQ and intelligence? We don't have genetic studies comparing humans, uh, comparing like black people to white people. Of course, that, that would be impossible at the molecular genetics level. What we do have is we have twin studies that first indicate yes iq is caused by gene and the variability in iq in human populations is caused by genes from between 50 percent and 80 percent of the variance seems to be explained by gene that's the first cue then we have the genes for intelligence the, the genes that correlate with intelligence so what we do is we look into tens of thousands of people and we look at what genetic variants seem to be most associated with higher iq or lower iq and it seems that these uh these genes the first that we found do indeed vary across races in a way that seems to mirror the hierarchy of intelligence. That is, if you have the genes that are associated to lower intelligence, uh, and if if, if you are less likely to be intelligent having that gene, we find that they are less frequent in the black population than they are in the white population. So I would uh, would answer, yes, there is GWAS evidence, the GWAS studies that provide evidence that you're talking about. I wouldn't say it's 100% sure evidence because the GWAS are a new tool and they have their own problems but we're getting there. Sure. So I would really like to see the, whatever twin studies you're talking about. Not now. You can link them later. And I would really like to see the GWAS evidence you have because because from all of the GWAS stuff I'm familiar with, it seems like um, it, it was the opposite of that, that variability in intelligence was very hard to link to specific um, g- genetic markers. It, this is a very difficult thing to do. The last one I looked at was some preprint that um, totaled like 300,000 um, Europeans where they were trying to measure and then do regression analysis to find out you know, how much of the variance in intelligence can be attributed back to some genetic thing. And they were only able to get like 5% or whatever attributed to genetic variants. So I'd be really interested in yeah. seeing that GWAS. So earlier I left a twin study earlier in the chat and on the right that you will find. You have the link to the twin study. Then I'm leaving the alternative hypothesis on GWAS and the, the general case for race and IQ being genetics. And you can also look at the uh, recent alternative hypothesis video called Why 80%. And if, uh, JF, if you could DM me all those links, I'll toss those uh, down in the description bar. I'll also tweet out this is what they were talking about at the end, just so everyone who's watching can check that out as well. All right? All right. (laughs) Uh, What a stream, guys. Destiny, how you feeling? Feeling all right? Yeah, we're still here. (laughs) JF, how about you, man? Yeah, I'd like to conclude on on my perception of the discussion. I think we didn't get much far, and I think there would be place for extending this conversation in another stream if you guys are up for it. Uh, What we have here, 
It seems that um, Destiny is one of the rare people on the left who seems to be saying, I accept the existence of races. No, I haven't said that quite. To the fact. I'm not opposed to the fact that it could exist. I just don't see a useful... Dis- right? When we talk about taxonomy, we make distinctions in, in groups of people because there's something meaningful to, to derive from that distinction. And I'm not fully convinced that there is a distinction, that there are genetic clusters that could be traced back to geographic origins of, of ancestors that makes for like a meaningful distinction. Um, but, but the okay, descriptive well, part of this is something that I feel like, I know you, earlier you said like hormone levels and IQ and cognitive performance, but I haven't seen the data that IQ can be heavily correlated um, via these GWASs um, through, through some sort of analysis that you can correlate IQ to gene clusters from specific people. I've never seen that type of uh, data before. I mean, there are ancestry companies in the U.S. that mm-hmm. would that actually provide a service where they tell you, okay, your ancestors came from air, air, and air. Yep. And so the, this this in, in and of itself proves your first point uh, to be wrong. You are wrong in hesitating about claiming that there are genetic clusters that point to ancestry. We are no, 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 stop. I'm talking specifically. I'm talking specifically about phenotypes, not not just the existence of the genetic clusters, but how they manifest in, into a phenotype, right? That, there can be wide varieties in genetic clusters, but how, how do these present phenotypically, right? That's the important question. Well, they present in the facial structure, for example, and skin color. Do you recognize that phenotype? Yeah, sure. But is that a meaningful distinction to make different races of people? I'm not sure. What about hair color? What about blood type? Or, or what about um, height, right? That these are There are a lot of distinctions that could be made here. Is there value in classifying these people as different races of people? But but skin color and, and um, hair color and eye color um, are, are not as as argued as what you seem to claim for IQ and cognitive performance or, or the hidden variable G that these can be because heavily correlated with genetic clusters. Sorry, what's that? Can I ask you, uh, like, aside from people who use this this information to propose a white ethno state, so let's just take out the mm-hmm. that 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 like in my opinion racist thing aside because mm-hmm. I don't want to ban people from in an, uh, living in an area. I think it's inhumane, my personal choice. Um, however, if we take that aside, is there a problem with with seeing different people as different races? Like when you see an Asian person, you go, Asian, that's the first thing. Black person, black person, you know, instantly. Is there a problem with, you know, identifying different races besides people who may use it to, you know, say things like we should just, you know, you know, burn them all or, or fucking send them back to, you know what I mean? I mean, like, in a vacuum, no. I mean, like, you're just making statements about phenotypes, I guess. Like, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. It, it, it comes down to more how does this manifest on a cultural level? Um, for instance, like, let's say that um, let's say that when you were born, if you were born in a certain city, somebody stamped it on your head or tattooed it on your head, right, to show that you were born in this city. Um, you know, you could ask me that same question. Does it really matter that I can see that some, you know, shitty city is stamped on your forehead or something that I can actually see like some that, that I could see this, you know, even if it has no bearing on you as a person? Um, and, you know, your answer could be, well, no, it's just another piece of information. But the thing is that in society, we tend to extrapolate. This is what humans do, right? This is why we're so successful as a species is that we're very good at, um, at, at discovering patterns and then unfortunately at applying patterns where they don't exist, right? So, so people will see one piece of data and they might extrapolate a ton from that. And that's why you have to be careful about what is the value of this taxonomic, you know, distinction between two groups of people? That if I were to start to say that blacks are a different subspecies than whites or caucasoids, right? If I make that distinction without having a really good argument, well, there are some different gene clusters that manifest in some different hormone levels that don't really mean much at all, that people will take that differentiation and they will extrapolate a lot of moral bad out of that, right? Well, these are blacks. Why are they in the same places as whites? We're totally different races of people. They don't need to be here. And they might extrapolate a whole lot more from that um, than, than simple phenotypical differences. They might go as far as to say these are inherently dumb people, they have no creativity, they're aggressive, you know, the warrior gene, you know, all that shit. People go crazy into that. Or, you know, things like the Holocaust, you know, can happen when you otherize people like that. Sorry. Yeah, no worries, dude. And I agree with JF on, on this. Uh, in fact, next week we got um, a brand new setup, a new layout. I'm using OBS and I'd like to take some of the studies that JF was talking about. JF wanted to send those to me and I could like visually put them on the screen so the audience can see. Um, and if you have anything, Destiny, please send them to me and then we could sort of like go on. Cause- so, like the, so I wanted to get a background in this and it's gonna take me a month to do it. You have to be really careful and I don't, I'm not calling you out. Um, 
JF is oh, probably aware of this. Yeah, but like you have to be really careful that a layman can't really interpret a study. This is why when I get into debates with people about these topics, I'm usually just citing like researcher credentials. Well, technically JF can um, because he has the academic background to do so. Um, but it's really hard to look at one study and go, well, you know, I disagree with the researcher's it, conclusion there because you don't really have the background to do it. You well, know? if you want then, if mm -hmm. you want then, I'll put feelers out throughout the week, mm -hmm. um, and I'll I'll look for like, like what kind of a, a person are you looking for uh, like, somebody with a with a heavy background in, in genetics biology human biology um I, I don't know there's a ton of different backgrounds that i don't know the names of I related think, to this area yeah i think there's one biologist who is definitely more on your side on this uh i some people were sending me if anyone knows uh because i was sent this biologist who's actually against what jf is saying mm -hmm. so i could bring i could just get you in contact with that biologist so it's more fair uh, I'd like to do that if you'd like. Yeah, or I mean, like, this is a topic that I'm, I, I, I'm just trying to find I as, 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 every biologist on YouTube. They don't <laughs> want to talk to me anymore. They are scared. Yeah, and oh, destiny really? today. I mean, we don't even need a freaking study. Destiny <laughs> just self contradicted by, on the one hand, acknowledging that the facial features of the races are created are are irritated genetically and on the other end saying well but but i don't know if it's enough to define a race well you're creating a false threshold there i don't know if it's enough to define a race it's enough if people want to if if people so, want to define a race based on these features it's enough there's no threshold not true at all. to reach that's for just, a race that's can, absolutely can, not true there's actually there's, 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 no there's a such huge thing as a race no, threshold. because as soon as as soon as this whole um, as soon as genetic profiling and whatnot um, started to come out or people were starting to sequence genomes. There's like a huge debate in like the whole taxonomy community about like what is a subspecies. Um, I was talking to a guy last night that specializes in this shit was talking about like for birds, there are like a million different fucking subspecies of birds that now that we've genetically profiled them, a lot of people are saying, why do we have so many subspecies of birds? Should we be scared that this subspecies is even going extinct? Are they, do they even deserve to be called a subspecies? This is absolutely not settled science. Um, there, there is a huge debate over what qualifies as a, as a separate species or a separate race of person. And I I think it's incredibly valid to ask what is the value of, of giving a different race to this person? I think that's a totally valid question. Just because I recognize no some phenotypical differences doesn't mean that I'm willing to say that these people deserve an entirely separate classification. That's a ridiculous false equivalency that I never stated. Well, you are making the implicit classification. You're just refusing to call it race. Of there course, no but we make classifications. Scientific debate. There, there's no <sighs> scientific debate about what a subspecies is. We all agree that there is a continuum of genetic variation and we can we can define subspecies at any level we want from the very microscopic one letter of dna difference up to the very macroscopic multiple gene difference within a species it's not a scientific debate it's an arbitrary semantic issue sure but the issue is whether or not we can derive value from these classifications the recognizing that there are different phenotypes and also you're, you're, you're presenting it as though like, oh, well, Destiny recognizes different phenotypes, so he's on the same page as, as everybody else. The other people are trying to recognize differences in like inherent cognitive ability. This is much different than like, are you black or white? These are complicated, um, you know, neurological structures that are that haven't even really been explored in, in a genetic way that supports your argument. This is why you rely on twin studies as opposed to GWASs, because you don't have the genetic argument that you can concretely make. So, no, just because I recognize differences in some... Ju ju just because I um, recognize some differences in phenotypes, like height or facial bone structure or, or, or skin color, doesn't mean that I'm on board with saying we should have totally different races of people, and also IQ might be intrinsic to a person as well. That's it. Well, you agree with me on the facts, you don't agree on the word. I'm <laughs> Okay, that's what you took. That's what you got for that hey, show. Hey, look, if we if we uh, set something else up, uh, I'll let everyone know. Maybe if there's something deeper we can go into, or some studies we can actually look at, uh, that'd be very interesting. Because the subject's pretty fucking intense, but. Andy, if uh, I were no. you, I would suggest for you, dude, focus on the normative claims. What ought we do? I, like, even seed the whole argument and say, okay, well, let's say that there might be some yeah. differences in intelligence. What do we do from there? That's that's where the meat of the argument is anyway. The descriptive yeah, shit is still a clusterfuck. We tried is, going for the morality of it. It took us one hour to determine if you wanted to fuck Asians more than whites. And we're still not sure what's going <laughs> yeah. well, on. That's such no, a straw man, JF. Tara I, McCarthy I, isn't talking about I, who she I, wants I, to fuck. She's talking about people that she want to pay to leave the 
the country. When we're talking about the normative claims of race realism, it's on whether or not we want to forcibly export people with threat of violence from a country, not who we want to fuck or not. That was a cute false equivalency again, though. What's up? But but the nor uh, yeah. So the normative uh, uh, claims. I've already I stated in the beginning and my personal opinion I I disagree with having a white ethno state. Uh, I want everyone to be very clear on that. But isn't it a disingenuous to not bring up the fact that there are differences in race? Like I'm not saying bring that up and now let's take it to the level that certain people want to take it to. Uh, that's just their opinion, and that's fine. They have their own opinion. Uh, I personally believe that we shouldn't judge people based on the color of their, of their skin or who they are, but their character. Uh, but what we've seen from everything and, you know, uh, visually, culturally, uh, averages, there are differences in race. Do you agree well, so on like, that? The, the, big, the big point, and this is what I focus on. I'm sorry, so moving again to the normative. The big reason why this is such an important conversation is because somebody sure. like me, I might I might observe like there's a difference in IQ between black people and white people, and my goal might be let's bridge this as much as possible. What type of educational programs can we do, et cetera, et cetera. That if you, if you quickly jump onto the, well, race is real, you know, <laughs> IQ differences are intrinsic, fuck them, you know, then your policy positions are going to, to look a lot different than mine. You might say like, well, I'm not going to waste public funding on education for blacks. I know there's stupid i've seen the twin studies from jf you know like that might be your new policy position um but yeah we you, could by the way uh this guy kill notes he just uh orange box here why don't you touch the topic of a country staying majority white instead of doing the dead horse of the ethno state um i think that's definitely like a topic we could definitely cover in the future and i'd be fucking down for that uh but obviously what we've been doing this week has been slowly just going over every point one by one. And I think that's the that's the rate that we should be going at because not a lot of people on YouTube have been talking about this very often. So it's slowly just, let's just edge into it. It's like, this is like anal. You don't just fucking pound the asshole. You're gonna rip, you, you're gonna need stitches. You have to lube it up and slowly go in. Sorry, I used that metaphor. I had nothing else, guys. Uh, wait, 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 I've missed, are we talking about the no sex now? No, no, I, I was metaphoring, a- I was metaphoring that uh, people are saying, let's get into the, uh, you know, the the topic of- uh, Andy, Andy, you don't okay. need to re-explain, I was trolling. Fuck me. <laughs> <laughs> How I always fall for it. Jesus Christ. Uh, yeah. So. I, I mean, I, I feel your pain, Andy. It's really hard to recognize when JF is being serious or a troll. He's like the manifestation <laughs> oh, yeah, of Poe's law in and of himself as a there. singular being. He, he no, is the ex- expression of Poe's law, like on his own. No, the hardest, <laughs> the hardest was, I don't know if you saw Destiny when I had, had naked ape on. Mm-hmm. Uh, he, he says his real point in the same tone and in the same paragraph as his joke. So he'll be like, yeah, no, I've had the displeasure of speaking with him before. And then yeah. we should kill them. Yeah. And I'm like, whoa, 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 hang on. He's like, I'm just joking. I'm like, about what part of the sentence? Does... Uh, but has there been a knockout study on nigger dick size? That's what we're all oh going to find God. out on the next Wars Club. I'm going to stick around and I'm going to definitely uh, read super chats, answer some questions. I want to also go uh, uh, talk about the new format of what we're doing here and i made up some rules uh just to keep everything in line but guys that was fucking excellent i like all right well thanks for having me on i hope that in the future when i have the descriptive side more handled because i need to do a lot of background on this i can come on and talk more to that yeah for sure let me know just uh uh, skype me whenever you have um yeah sure whenever you're ready about it man and thanks very much and and i love you man all right have fun good luck guys you didn't say i love you back what i just said i love you oh you said said have fun yeah I said I love you guys. I should be more as precise. I love you, Andy. I don't love you, Jay. Fuck yourself, right? Have fun, Andy. Thank peace you. out. All right, peace out, Destiny. Ah, uh, fuck. I think that went okay. I thought it was gonna be a lot worse. I think we did okay there. <laughs> I can't believe Tara came on. I- my favorite thing about that is that I was correct. JF could defend Tara's points better than Tara could. I wonder if JF felt that at all. If, he, if his mind was spinning like, oh God, like how am I going to spin this dumb bitch's fucking commentary into something that makes sense? Like, holy shit. <laughs> Oof. And then when Tara dipped into the background that I had with um, Fuentes. Oh, dude, if you want to talk about fucking founding fathers and race, I could do that conversation all day. I have all the fucking stats and data from that shit, from my arguments with, um, with JF. I did all of that research. We can play that game. Um, we can play that game. <laughs> we can play that game all day. Um, I'm sorry. The quote that I um, 
My point of challenging her there is that her argument was that, well, the founding fathers wanted the country to be predominantly white. So she was appealing to the um, desires of the founding fathers to say that her desires were the same. But the problem is the founding fathers had a different view on what white was versus what we think white is. Um, so one of the quotes that I had from um, um, Benjamin Franklin, I didn't get a chance to read this, um, but... Um, <clears throat> Why should Pennsylvania, founded by the English, become a colony of aliens who will shortly be so numerous as to Germanize us instead of us anglifying them, and will never adopt our language or customs any more than they acquire our complexion, right? Which leads me to add one remark, that the number of purely white people in the world is proportionally very small. All of Africa is black or tawny, Asia chiefly tawny, America, exclusive of the newcomers, wholly so, and in Europe, the Spaniards, Italians, French, Russians, and Swedes are generally of what we call a swarthy complexion, as are the Germans also. Only the Saxons, excepted, who are the English, make the principal body of white people on the face of the earth. I could wish their numbers were increased, and while we are, as I may call it, scouring our planet by clearing America of woods, and so making this side of our globe reflect a brighter light to the eyes of inhabitants in Mars or Venus, why should we, in the sight of superior beings, darken its people? Why increase the sons of Africa by planting them in America, where we have so fair an opportunity by excluding all blacks and tawnies of increasing the lovely white? white and red. But perhaps I am partial to this complexion of my country, for such kind of partiality is natural to mankind, right? So this is an example of like, when we, like, we wouldn't look at French people, Russians, Spaniards, or Italians as not white today, right? The, the terrorist definition of white is actually way, way, way different than what any founding father definition of white would have been. Um, yeah, sorry. Okay, I turned back on donation memes. Um, so proud of you, my dude. Thanks, Doc. Great 1v2.5. Oh, yeah. The ultimate irony is that she's part Jewish and part Indian. Nice. Destiny, I don't think there has ever been a time where you deserved my money more than... Wow, thanks, dude. This, it's a good thing you had that slippery Nick D. Bait Angel thump. I try my hardest to have... to make money off of my white guilt. <laughs> I don't think you should have ended by telling Jeff to fuck himself if you- Nah, fuck it, I don't care. Nah, I don't give a fuck about that. Nah, fuck that shit, dude. Go find another bleeding heart lib cuck. Nah, fuck JF. I don't like that, dude. And I will tell him to fuck himself. Fuck that guy. That guy engages in the worst kind of disingenuous wordplay. Fuck that, dude. That we can sit here and listen to a very- a video of Tara McCarthy, like, very clearly stating what she wants to do, and he's like, Well, actually, she's just talking about protecting her people. Notice how he kept trying to that redefine race to, like, country, or redefining race to people, to or redefining race to society. Notice that he kept shying away from that race word, like, he, he wouldn't do it and I had to keep correcting him every time I'm glad that I was able to focus on that I had to keep correcting him every time Tara's not talking about a people or a collection or a country she's talking about a race of white people um, but he, he refused to, to, to say that it was really that irritating that went about as well as expected thanks again for doing this man I can't wait for you to brush up on the descriptive side and argue that as well JF is so fucking dishonest. Thanks, Nuru Jack. I love you, buddy. Thanks for the hundred Soros bucks. Wow, the Twink King. Welcome to the ten dollar Deberino Cleberino. Ten bucks for Talmudic Tacitix. Yeah, and then I, I feel like some of the stances that JF had were ridiculous. We should never encourage, encourage introspective thinking. I'm not. I'm not interested in that. I don't know. It's, I'm. I, that would that would unfortunately I I know why he says those things which bothers me because I because I spoke with him so much about philosophy in the past I can see how he could construct his philosophy in such a way that My he doesn't care about it but um I just feel like it's so naive. Duckers off screen. <laughs> Love you, buddy. Thanks, my dude. Did you take notes and stuff? Um. I tried to. I don't want to say JF gish gallops because JF doesn't really gish gallop. But JF would bring up like this is the problem. Like JF, um, here I think I have my notes. Um, like JF would bring up like five things. Bunny is doing post debate analysis at the moment. <sighs> nice. Um, JF would bring up like five things and then. I would try to respond, but then the other people would keep taking it off. So there's like a lot of, there's a lot of points that I didn't respond to, right? Oh, like this. Remember when he said it confirms old ideas of race? That's not true. But when I responded to that, I didn't get a chance to go into it. From a genetic standpoint, we can tell where your ancestors come from. Just because we can tell your ancestry doesn't mean there's usefulness there in classifying you as a different type of person, right? Um, there, there were, um, yeah, there were a lot of these points that I wanted to get into, but every time, and I don't want to say JF Gishgallops because he doesn't really, he doesn't try to, um, because if it was just me and him having the conversation, we could go point by point, Damn but with the other people in there, it kept getting you. thrown so off. So many which was, people um, on the Reddit were yeah. doomsaying. Alfie psyched and who the fuck was that chick? LMAO, good job, man. Thanks, buddy. 
How can you force future discussions to separate descriptive from normative? How can you actually nail them when they're outright racism without getting tied down in weasel words? I don't know. With GF, it's really hard because he's so crazy stupid how he does like the word shit. Um, how, how he went full on to be like a terrorist supporter in that conversation went through any any small amount of inductive reasoning. It's pretty obvious to conclude that that Tara inside of her mind wants like a pure white or as close to pure white as possible state um, and wants to exclude as many white like he would keep reframing this in ways that JF were like barely tolerable. Are white, black, and Asian, so I guess us Jews are white now. Hashtag success. Good job, Danny. You did it. Welcome to the master race, my dude. Feels good, man. I feel like I gained a whole standard deviation of IQ just from identifying as white. Jesus. Can you explain the study alt hype brought up and didn't realize it was racist? Oh. Fuck! I actually spoke to that uh, a really smart economist on my stream once about this study, and it had to do with um. Oh shit! Let me see if I can. Dis um, there's a word for Destiny, it. Destiny, you are an inspiration to all um, lip cut kind. Thanks, thanks for the twenty dollars, John. Basically, the idea was that if you have. 20 black people, 20 white people in applications you give them to somebody, they will discriminate against the black applications, right? Well, the thing is that what, what we found, there there was a study, at least one, that showed that when you included criminal background... Also, Tara is a person who, in a recent interview, said she really wants to take her children out of public schools because too many low IQ people thought you could have focused on these implications a bit more though i missed the first hour uh maybe but basically the idea was that once you um once you showed criminal backgrounds a lot of the oh it's the jamal study once you um showed criminal backgrounds a lot of that discrimination disappeared so the idea was oh well look so people aren't actually racist that's what it sounded like alt hype was saying look they're not racist they're just you know well, they're just what? The idea is that if you don't include criminal background, people will make the assumption that if they're black, that they're more likely to be criminals than if they're white, and, th and then they'll discriminate based on that. My dude, um, you totally gave up the point about the twin studies. Because I, I don't know enough about them to talk the about them. That's why I asked Jeff to send the me a heritability thing. quotient. Yeah. And the HQ cannot be used to make the claims that JF is making. But the um, the idea that like um, well you know of course more black people are criminals so we can discriminate against them. like I'm curious like if you're hiring for like a computer engineering All job a at a company tiger. do you really think that a lot of your black applicants there that have like CVs that include like Stanford or or comp sci degrees that are like criminal in, in background like is that really an accurate assessment of, of the capability of your um, of your applicant like do you really think that's fair to say you know I don't know. Fuck JF. You did great, and hopefully, in a month's time, you can lit JF sass on fire. Wow, thanks, buddy. And holy shit, how dishonest can JF be? Like, seriously, the guy is a moron. What? I have never heard of him before. Who the fuck is he anyway? And Tara, holy um, shit, that bitchy. JF was a um, PhD neurobiologist, I think? Neurobiologist? Destroyed. What he was? Now is the time for StarCraft. How about the claim that proclivity to build nation states is in people's bloods? I think Tara's got the empirical evidence to demonstrate that one. No, but JF would of course agree with her. JF goes crazy on that phenotype shit, where JF will say that like people have a propensity to be like um to like form esports teams or something. Like he'll go like really really America. um yeah <laughs> yeah he'll go like really crazy on um on those big claims, you know.